Maybe. Oh, and we're live. Hey. Are you ready to rumble? Ooh. Here we are, folks. This is the battle of the century, the battle of titans. One nerd enters, two nerds enter, one nerd leaves. I was going to say, hold on now. Quiz. <laughs> one nerd enters, two nerds leave. Uh, oh. There's some asexual reproduction going on. And there, oh. I've just said sexual in the first uh, minute of live stream. I mean, we oh, all knew it was going to take uh, very long. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the ultimate battle of the ages, uh, Atunche versus Brandon, uh, right. a battle of wits, a battle of wits. Um, uh, we are going to be asking, here's how the game is going to work, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are going to be asking each other uh, 10 very niche, obscure questions about topics that we each know a lot about. Uh, so basically, I'm going to be asking Brandon questions about stuff that he's made videos about or that I know or that we've talked about in person or that I know he is like pretty knowledgeable on. Uh, obsessed with. And, obsessed with and and vice versa. You know, so I'm, you know, I'm going to hit him with, you know, War of Independence, you know, long 18th century. He's going to hit me with, you know, New Orleans, colonial New England, Civil War, that kind of stuff. Uh, so that's mm -hmm. the idea. Um, we Wait, will, you don't do uh, the... I what? You don't do the Vietnam Vietnam War? That's not your specialty? Uh, uh, no, no. Oh, oh no. Okay, no, no, well, let me only, the, only, the French, uh, only the French part of the conflict. Oh, okay. uh, no, as everyone knows, I am the quintessential 20th century uh, guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, so that's what we're going to be. Uh, that's the game. Basically, uh, I fully expect... Uh, just as a as a uh, just to save face here, I want to say that I fully expect to get cream. I'm j creamed. I'm just bad at remembering facts in general. All my videos but, are very tightly. But scripted. what you do when you say that is you establish a world in which if you lose, it's expected, <laughs> and no one can think bad of you. And if you this, win, it's this like is rigged. wow, he did so well. Good job. How? What? This game is rigged. This game is, game rigged. is rigged. <laughs> the game is rigged. I'm gonna lose, and we all know why. We all know why. It's because the game. We is all know why. All Checkmate, right. Brandonites. Um, I like that. And uh, and uh, between questions, we'll be uh, answering super chats and stuff, and and just kind of doing a Q and A. Uh, the uh, the the idea is that we're here to have fun. Also, I was kind of thinking, Brandon, like maybe we should have like phone the phone a friend kind of elements, or like phone oh, a friend. That could be. Yeah, that would. Be and fun. like ask the audience, like maybe yeah. we each get one, and we can like, uh, and and yeah, we can so we 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 can like phone a friend and and and. Okay, you know, yeah, or, or maybe or like the like the ask the audience thing could be like, all right, I'm between two possibilities, so we have you start a poll yes. in the chat. Yeah, for yeah, like what yeah. People think would be more. Yeah, that that might be. Yeah, good. yeah, yeah, exactly. Which I don't know how to do, but we could just tell people to like spam the chat. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and that could be cool. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, so I don't, yeah, we'll have one. We'll, we'll we'll have we'll be able to use that uh, once each of us, right? So uh, both we, okay. we can either phone a friend or ask the audience, and 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 then we can only use that once and. Uh, Hot cream and farts got got to four hundred dollars riding on me. I mean, hey, hold, uh, hold on. If we I can so, if we can like work together on this. We want to like split some of the winning. I mean, I can. I don't mind. I don't have the dignity. The I can throw this. <laughs> yeah, I can take the ball. Take the ball. Uh, all right. Well, uh, should we hit? Should we do the first question here? Uh, who, who yes, should go sir. First? Would you like to? Uh, sorry. Yeah, I can hit you. I can hit you. All right. Question one. Okay. Question one. Question. The Green Mountain Boys, an irregular oh. militia group active in the American War of Independence, was originally formed to fight against invasions from which of the 13 colonies? Oh, dun, God. Dun, 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 Wait, invasion dun, from dun, dun, or troops in? From. From. Dun, 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 okay, so. Dun, 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 oh, God. Whereas dun, dun, Kings Mountain is being fought either, I think it's dun, in dun, South dun, Carolina. Dun, so, I mean, dun, dun, I mean, the British. Dun, dun, the main force was in New York. They're sending troops down south, but uh, I suppose I'm a little confused by the format of the question. Uh, so, so okay, no, so this no, the army started and they marched. So Is this was so. Th so here, so the question, just to make it a little clearer. So th this irregular militia, militia group was active in the American War of Independence. However, I am not yes. necessarily asking you about that war. I am asking you that they were fought. There were they were this. The Green Mountain Boys were formed oh. to protect their oh. state uh, or their uh, colony against another of the thirteen colonies that was trying to oh, basically God. take them over. See that that actually is new information to me. I had no idea that's why they were formed. I would have expected that they were raised up because of the American War of Independence. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. So, ooh, where am I? So they. I, I will give you a hint. Stab in the Okay. Yes. I'm, I'm, I will give you a hint. The it uh, 
the the answer to who this state to to who the Green Mountain Boys are from, which which colony uh, or you know current state is in the name, the Green Mountain Boys. It is in the name, the state that borders the Green Mountains. Is it Pennsylvania? Is it? I I, no, I, I was gonna say I don't think so. No, I thought no. My, my girlfriend was giving me a signal, and she's from Pennsylvania. I'm like, it doesn't. Let's matter. let's let's uh, let's arrive on a final answer here, Brandon. Oh god. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, Pennsylvania is powerful, but they're too far north. That's not gonna happen. Um, Virginia is nearby and very strong, and everyone hates them. Um, but the Carolinas, I don't. I'm even talking about with the name being. Is it Virginia? I'll also say Virginia. Is that your final answer? Oh, I guess what you're giving. She's going like this to me. I don't know what that means. I, I'm sorry. I'm trying to cheat with her. Um, oh, people, yeah. Okay. Now, I now someone said in the chat. It said, and they said Vermont. But my final answer was going to be Virginia. So we'll go with that. Well, both were incorrect because both the were state, oh. the state was Vermont. However, the state that was trying to take them over, the colony, was New York. New York was the oh, answer. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, for so some reason, I was I was thinking that they were down south. I was you, uh, yes. Well, you know, Green, Green Mountain Boys sounds quite folksy and southern, doesn't it? But yeah, uh, no, but, it, yeah. It I guess. Oh, Mountain. yeah. I guess. I was thinking of the Over Mountain Men. That's why uh, Kings Mountain. Over, that's the yeah, connection yeah, yeah. I was making. And and that Over Mountain is uh, is on the Appalachian Trail, uh, one of my favorite places. And yeah, you can go oh, over Over go. Mountain. Yeah, yeah they were uh, the guys who were down yeah. south of the Battle of Kings Mountain and all that. Okay, now that makes yeah, sense. yeah. So uh, uh, yeah, so basically, Green Mountain Boys were formed in I think it was the 1760s uh, because New Yorkers were basically trying to invade what was called the New Hampshire Grants at that time, which was now the state of Vermont, uh, and and oh. it was briefly the Vermont Republic and all that. So Green Mountain Boys, irregular yeah. militia group, uh, meant to terrorize New Yorkers from being in Vermont and get them out. Uh, it, it's a noble cause. It's a very it noble, is a noble cause. cause fighting New, New York, I can confirm. <laughs> yes, that. exactly. All right, then. So now my question for you, sir. Um, okay. And I'm ready. I don't know. Vague answers is, are acceptable here. Cause like the actual answer is very, is a specific number, but like you can, okay. if you give me something in the range, I'll, I'll accept that. So, uh, do, 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 is that, is that, did, is that, is that right? Did I, did I get that right? Yes. Did, yeah. Oh, I um, should have brought my colored lights. So. <laughs> the, uh, let's see. The 1811 German coast uprising was a slave revolt in the territory of Orleans, AKA Louisiana. It saw some 200, potentially up to 500 re uh, slaves rebel. However, they were primarily armed with simple farming tools and faced off against local militias, uh, as well as a limited number of regular troops. My question for you, and I, I like I wrote it all out here, so I would be <laughs> my question for you is between battle summary and 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 uh, formal executions, which included incidentally the displaying of heads on pikes, fun stuff. Um, uh, how many how many were killed in the conflict? How big was this? Uh, uh, was the was the battle and everything that we're talking about? Uh, bonus points as well if out of the number overall killed, you can give me a. Uh, good hint as to like just how extreme the disparity is on either side. Mm -hmm. So, so, all right. So how many rebels were killed in the, in the fighting? Yes. If you not, can give me that. The execution. Uh, in, no, just um, in general. Above, just, okay. Overall. In general. Yeah. So in the fighting summary executions and actual like judges okay. afterwards saying you should. Yes. That. Yes. So, uh, so uh, right. We have, uh, we have a confrontation, a, uh, a gun battle, a brief gun battle that happens where it, uh, today, uh, where Norco, Louisiana is today. Um, uh, and, uh, I believe it was, uh, 40, uh, no, 80 enslaved rebels killed at the battle and, uh, 100 executed and their heads put on pikes. And that is my final answer. Oh, <laughs> Very, so very certain. 180-ish. Uh, now, now, here's the thing as well, is I, it kind of makes me second guess myself, because I'm like, oh, but what if I got my information from the wrong place? Because <laughs> I never even heard about this until I saw your videos about it. Um, I'm afraid, though, I have a number as of 97 killed overall. Only two Damn. white soldiers, or white militia yes, men. Yes, that like I knew. Or two white owners, yeah. And um and ninety five uh, rebel slaves oh for a combination God. of everything. Oh my! God. So all right, <laughs> maybe you want to give yourself a half a point because you were like pretty close, but it wasn't. You know. Sure. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, this is a low scoring game so far. So uh... there we go. 
if it's okay with you, I'll give myself the half. Uh, <laughs> half a point is acceptable, I think. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, great. Um, uh, and as Tyler saying, the data sounds imprecise. I mean, yeah, well, they did. Yeah. I mean, there, there are good records, though, about uh, uh, about the executions. We we know pretty, mm-hmm. we know we know how many uh, uh, people got executed. Um, so uh, uh, somebody says, I love how Brandon is a well-shaven historian and, and Andy just looks like a homeless man. Uh, oh. Eat my shit. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's A-Man. Hey, I know, I know him. He's, he's, oh, he's one him? of my people. Yeah, he's, he's nice. a good Nice. <laughs> nice. Uh, dope, dope, dope. Um, okay. So, uh, I mean, should we just move right along here or, uh, uh, oh, uh, I just want to make sure I get the super chats here. Um, yeah, yeah. thank you for the funds history army. May the, may the best man win indeed. Uh, and, and... What's, what's, what's the famous line from the greatest movie ever made Brandon? It's a, yes, it is true. I was the better man. Uh, oh man, God. Oh, yeah. My yeah. son for better men. <laughs> Yeah, my yes, my sons were better men, and then he said, "It's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, great, yeah. great, uh, great movie." Uh, Fat Pro, taste the in the mouth. Um, uh, favorite slash least favorite films from your favorite genres. Ooh. I know you're well, not okay. A, I think everyone not a huge knows my guy, least but... favorite. Um, so, for, as far as history movies go, uh, yeah, yeah, if they shall, if if. They, uh, they Shall Not Grow Old counts as a movie. That's definitely one of the favorites. Uh, 1917, I loved. Uh, Barry Lyndon is probably my favorite 18th century film. So um, did you, so last time we talked, I because I saw your video about it and I was like, oh, he must have seen it, but we haven't had a yeah, chance to talk yeah. about it yet. Because yeah, no, yeah, finally, finally, finally got around it, to watching it. How how much did you, did you ejaculate? Uh, just oh, the, what the uh, gallons? Uh, uh, what was you, the, you know, um, <laughs> What is what a strange question to I'm ask? Sorry, I'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no but I um, I, I'm aware that I'm a weirdo and I'm I'm okay with it. But, uh, uh, no, it, yes, it was I, I, it was just it was beautiful. I mean, every once in a while, like when like when Barry was like uh, boxing the other soldier, and he has this like full beard, and I'm like, what made you think that was a good idea? Find any portrait of a soldier from this time period with a full beard like the most you can get is like in the battle of Kalat. there's like a there's a painting of a guy with like a little bit of stubble and that's as yeah. close as you get to a beard i'm like yeah exactly. this looks so for for a film that dedicated so much effort and so much time yeah. to getting like this picturesque perfect view of the 18th century and then they do something yeah. like that it's like what? <laughs> but but on the whole, mm-hmm. fantastic, amazing film. Definitely one of my favorites. Yeah, Worst yeah, yeah. film, absolutely. Nice. The Patriot and Braveheart and basically anything with Mel Gibson. All right, your turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, I mean, I, you know, and and you know me, I I, I like Braveheart. Uh, and I'm not afraid to admit it. I know it's a bold uh, take and, and mm-hmm. it's all right. Take me away, PC police. Uh, no, but... Um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, but I do honestly, you know, and, and, uh, and actually one thing that I, um, I'm sure that our, our viewers probably uh, think is interesting maybe. Um, and, and I haven't mean to talk to you about, cause we, yeah, we just haven't, uh, guys just, uh, you know, we haven't like caught Brandon and I haven't caught up in a while. We've like been texting back mm-hmm. and forth about, uh, about, uh, uh, sort of projects and stuff, but, uh, but we haven't caught up in a while. And, mm-hmm. uh, and honestly, I've been like kind of thinking about sort of like the, the video that I made about you and stuff. And I feel like I'm kind of softening. I, I feel like you might have had the last laugh because I think I am like, I think well, here, pretty here's the thing. to your position. Um, here's the thing about honestly, that as well. And Braveheart is kind of what I was, what I was thinking about uh, as mm-hmm. far as that's concerned. Cause like, I think I'm sort of more, cause I kind of like looking back at sort of like when uh, history nerd friends would like talk shit about Braveheart, a yeah. lot of why I would defend it was just me being defensive, right? It was just me having an emotional response just because I liked the movie. And, but I, I'm sort of like realizing more and more, and I guess just maturity and self-awareness, right? It's just like, I can appreciate the, like it as a film and as like a well-made film, but as yeah. just, but also just like understand that it is like another travesty, historically speaking, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, Cause yeah. it is so, like quite, quite terrible in that regard. Yeah. Um, so just so one guy in the chat mentioned uh, oh, over there is a chat uh, master and commander, which I somehow I forgot about, but yes, that, oh, that okay. one's like, yeah, which you have another five, great video five, on. Yeah, easily. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. I need to make more videos about Master and Commander about the movies. But I also I want to say though, because to be fair, with the video that you made, I think that with some of my content, you hit the nail on the head pretty well. Though, as far as like 
sometimes it can go too far and sometimes it doesn't matter. Like some of the videos that I made really early on when it was just like pure hobby for me and I wasn't really thinking too much about like grand scheme of things. Um, but like that black sales video, like some of the points that I made in that video, I think were quite valid of like mm -hmm. the way they portrayed linear conflict only makes it to show like, oh, they were so stupid back then, yet, yet, and things like yeah, that are yeah. damaging. Yeah. But other things like the command that he said was uh, uh, right shoulder forward, whereas it should have been company right shoulder forward. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who can like that doesn't really matter as much. Sure. And you're absolutely correct in that there are and and truth be told, this can probably come out uh, as like seeming like what I am based on the videos that I make, and obviously because in the videos you only see a very distinctive part of my personality and who yeah, I course, am yeah, and yeah. all that. Yeah. Um, but I think even, are, I mean, when I, even when I made that video, like even before we became friends, like I knew that it was like, oh, you've talked course, about this yeah. in video, you were just like, there is a point to this. It's like, I'm being like, yeah. I'm kind of playing it up, but like the idea yeah, is yeah. to educate um, and yeah, 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 yeah. But it is absolutely the case. And we all know people like this who get so invested in those yes. insanely intricate little details that they do, that they lose the big picture. And for them, that's what history is. It's, you know, uh, how do you tailor a regimental coat, not what's yeah, the yeah, story yeah. of the man who's wearing it? Exactly. Um, and we all know people, you know, like that. Although I will also admit, I'm gonna be honest, when I when when you did make your video and I saw that, I'm like, I gotta I, I kinda gotta show this guy up. And that's what inspired <laughs> me to make sure that the first video was the one about racism. Cause I'm like, no, 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 no. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, matters. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Nice. Because <laughs> I saw nice. you made the video yeah, yeah, yeah. about like um no, totally, you know, about like totally. gods and generals and I'm like, oh no, no, no. You're gonna to come to my side. Yeah, I know yeah, you yeah. Are. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you will. You will join me. Yeah, uh, yeah totally, yeah. totally. But yeah, no, I. Uh, 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 but yeah, here, let's let's grab a couple of these uh, super chats and see what uh, see what else people uh -huh. are talking about. Uh, Tyler, thanks for the five bucks, man. Uh, I'm making a Western Cannibal episode for your channel using ravenous uh, music. Oh, that's very sweet. Uh, watch out for those uh, copyright claims, bud. Uh, yeah. I, I I don't uh, I don't make any uh, get any ad revenue from a few of my videos because. Uh, yeah. Because no I was a little advice. sloppy about that in uh, in the early days. Um, okay, <laughs> you know, thanks for five bucks. <laughs> Every uh, time, yep. Uh, he like just released enough. one. Yeah, yeah. I have most of the research for the next one is done. It's actually going to be about um, gender relations in the film and in the 18th century and all that. So basically, I've I've went through and I've categorized every time a female character has opened her mouth in that film. It doesn't happen a lot. And uh, now all I have to do basically is I'm going to rewatch the Patriot. Again. Again, and Again. I'm going to actually, with like a stopwatch, I'm going to time the amount of actual like time there is that a woman is talking compared with how much time it is of just a woman oh forlornly staring off into the distance as her yes. man rides off to mutilate, I mean, defend freedom, something like that. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, and I feel like you just released one, or maybe I'm just sort of, you know. Uh, I mean, com comparatively uh yeah like yeah it was like a month ago or something more recently um, yeah and uh okay let's see here we, uh oh uh, how do i how do i do this i'm sorry guys uh i am trying to <laughs> see all the super chats here uh thanks for the 10 bucks ken um oh well that's very sweet sketch man oh. uh uh was the terror season one great or not i thought it was fucking unbelievable i love that i show, haven't seen man. it yet uh and um and uh, yeah, I thought it was great. Uh, pirate historian, Tyler is a pirate historian, like Black oh, Sails. That, that triggers my fight or flight response, I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, 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 yeah. The show is hilarious <laughs> fantasy if you know the history well. I mean, yeah, it's, it's. Uh, I, I haven't really uh, seen Black Sails that much. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I do, uh, speaking of your video, Brandon, with like the, uh, one thing I really don't like about a lot of those sorts of battle scenes and a lot of those types of shows is the like, the constant, just like how much they dwell on just clever traps. You know yeah. what I mean? There's because those always... stupid Europeans can't comprehend yeah, yeah, non-traditional yeah, yeah. warfare. Like, yeah, wait, yeah, they are in a line. How do we shoot them if they're not in a line? Like, yeah, yeah. Well, it's. I think. Uh -oh. I mean, I kind of. I mean, it's a great. Speaking of uh, Stanley Kubrick, I mean, it's an amazing movie and one of the best battle scenes ever. But uh, the, I think a lot of people get that from from Spartacus. Uh, the Spartacus battle scene mm -hmm. was, I think, like one of the first uh, uh, big battles that had like you know a a very 
uh, like an outnumbered, outmanned force fighting against big mechanized Roman army uh, yeah, marching along yeah. the and uh, and they kind of use clever little traps and stuff and um, yeah uh, and you know kind of the spectacle of a move, movie made in 1960 you know with thousands of extras of, like where it's like amazing but yeah um, so that uh, that sort of becomes the new trend going forward. yeah that's sort of a trope now it's always gonna be like ooh the you know or you know hold now you know uh, uh, picking up all the shiltrums that weren't there in the other shots uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> Uh, last super chat, then we'll get on to the questions. Uh, fake Skylar. Uh, sorry, I'd only want to talk to real Skylar. Uh, just letting uh, me know that I only uh, first listened to the 1861 Overture in its entirety, and it goes hard on Ironically Musical Masterpiece. I agree. Kudos to Dylan DeRosa. Uh, Dylan DeRosa is uh, my longtime collaborator. He composes the music, uh, most of the music oh. on my channel, and for Frozen cool. 50s Man, and and for like my movies and stuff. And uh, and yeah, and he, wow. he wrote, nice. uh, I, I told, asked him to write a Check My Lincolnites theme, which was basically just going to be oh. the beginning of Dixie. And he wrote a 17-minute yeah. uh, mini symp symphony uh, oh telling the whole story of the Civil War. And it's... Oh, it I haven't... Yeah. I, don't, I, I haven't heard about that. I, I just... Honestly, I just sort of figured that you found music on YouTube or whatever and use that. I mean, so, a lot of it is things? like royalty free, but, but yeah, like I, you know, like for frozen fifties man in particular, that's all like composed and oh, stuff. And, you know, yeah, nice. I mean, I heard nobody Dylan could do it, but uh, that's awesome. Uh, okay. Um, uh, thanks everybody for the super chats. Let's uh, move on to these next couple questions and we can go back to our viewer questions all right. here. Uh, all right. So we're back to the quiz, everybody. Dun, dun, bah, 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 bah. Um, okay. All right. Um, this, this is a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Um, uh, okay. 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 This is tough on Brandy. All right. This is my second question for Brandon. Mm -hmm. Which 18th century MP said in 1776 that quote the government and majority have drawn us into a war that, in our opinions, is unjust in its principle and ruinous in its consequences. Later, this MP, as uh, when he was Secretary of State, um, was instrumental in establishing New South Wales in Australia as a penal colony. He's probably a Whig, I know that much, but otherwise I'm, I'm afraid. Uh, is he like a really famous figure? Is he the kind of guy that I, that like- No. Everyone, like, <laughs> no, okay, yeah, no, no. no. What are you talking about? You're going to flipping, uh, like get creamed in this. This is, oh, this is awful. Um, I'm only leading yeah. my point. Yeah, no, this was, this is, this one was unfair. I mean, he's, he's kind of, this guy is kind of famous in Australia. You know, okay, but, in Australia. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know. Is it is his last name Sydney? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> that that, yes. that is not no no. That should not count for me though, because that's just because of the capital's name Sydney. No. So like, okay. I mean, hey, uh, I, no, I, I'm, I I'm inclined to give it to you. There's a name called Sydney Smith, but that's just a captain, I think. Right? No, that's yeah, not, no, no. That's not a politician. No. Um no, 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 that was just the guy. He was in the Napoleonic Wars, right? Which Something incidentally like is Sydney Smith, my boss, my old boss at, my, at the tour company that I worked at was, was named Sydney. Oh, huh, there um, you go. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I, so I guess, yeah, the name is Sydney and, and I'm, uh, uh, I guess I'll let you give me a half point. Honestly, or whatever. Yeah. I think, I, guess, I think that's he, worth half point. Is he a point. wig? Is he a wig? Yes. He, yes okay. He, all right. I'll, I'll, I'll accept your half point then. Yeah. I think that is, that's easily a half point. I mean, you know, Hey, there's Wait, a lot of hold cities. On. The capital of Australia isn't Sydney. Oh, no, oh my Brisbane. God. Right, it's Brisbane. Or it's no, all these people are saying Canberra. Okay, well, well, yeah, Sydney is, you know, it, it oh. might as well be. It should be the capital. Might as well be, but oh, uh, wow, that was. An, I mean, it might an be a moment. I mean, well, yeah, so exactly. Good. Well, it's so stupid. It's like you know, why is Raleigh the capital of North Carolina, not Charlotte? Why is Baton Rouge the capital of Louisiana? I guess so. I'm going to look at a map of you know? Australia now. But I mean, Sydney. I no, know. I mean, you're right. Yeah, it's it's. Oh, somebody says the capital of New South Wales is Sydney. Oh, okay. It's, that maybe that's why I've heard of it. That is, yeah. Um, huh. You learn so, something uh, every day. Uh, oh, do you want to uh, do you want to go to my question, or should we? We've got a couple super chats coming in. Should we answer those first? Or? Oh, well, how about if I, I'll I'll do the next question for you. Yeah, now, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, sure, and sure. then we can do super chats in between. Um, okay. Absolutely. So, when it comes to Norse attempts to colonize North America, there are two detailed written accounts we have to go off of, at least according to your video about it. One is the saga of the Greenlanders and was written somewhere around 1200. What was the second saga and how long after the first saga was it written? And bonus points, if you can also tell me how long either of those stories were written after Leif Erikson had already died. I can absolutely do all of that, uh, Brandon. Uh, the saga of Eric the Red. 
Uh, it was written 80 to 100 years after Saga of the Greenlanders. And that is, and so we're talking uh, Saga of the Greenlanders is like 1200 and yep. Saga of Eric the Red is around through 1300. So we're talking yep. two, 300 years after Leif Erikson. Kapatool! Yeah, Ooh. yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. He's, he's gone. He's, he's gone. Oh, there he is. Oh, 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 no. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> and that is one point. For TOS purposes, that was an airsoft rifle, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, who, who cares? Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, yes, yes. Moving it's, on. Uh, you know, it's my, my, uh, my MP4. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, in any case, uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, no, I saw oh my God. I'm, I'm in the lead. It was tied. Well, I know he made a whole video about that, but it was a few years ago. I don't know what sorts of no, questions he's going to pull up with. Oh, this random MP that was elected on 8th of June, <laughs> 1743, and, and was in office for two days. What was his middle name? <laughs> no, that was that was I'm the so, you know, you, No, you gave me a softball. I have a couple softballs for you, too. Uh, okay, I do have right. a couple softballs. So, uh, so yeah. So, so uh, no, it's um, uh, okay. Uh, so, let's see. Thanks, everybody, for the Super Chats. Let's see um, uh, what we have here um somebody says good day from australia 40th oh there's an and australian there too after there's i made australia. a mistake oh i'm uh, so sorry i love both your channels rip i to see you guys collaborate collaborating um what is aif uh I, I he asked sounding like an idiot uh australian expeditionary force or no well and maybe it's a typo for aef um, yeah 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 okay but even then they're not usually called that i don't think they usually have a yeah Australian, American, I guess maybe uh, maybe here American maybe Indian else. Frontier. No, 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 that wouldn't. No, be um, no. um, all right, let's see. Uh, but I'll question say, for cool. for uh, Atun Shea, Free State of Jones, pretty flaccid movie. Yes, but the battle scenes pre seem pretty authentic ish. Uh, what's your take? That that is my take. Uh, I know a lot of people want me to make a video about that. I may, I may not. I don't know. I'm kind of so. So actually, I, I was planning on making a video talking about oh. the differences between how that movie and like Gettysburg portrayed mm. battle in the Civil War. And I actually wanted to invite you on to maybe okay. talk about that or something. So um, just to- Yeah, just of to, course. Sorry. It, th I'm no, sorry. That's, that's, that's very obnoxious, but I only have like three <laughs> jokes in my repertoire and that's one of them. So. Uh, no, no. That's, that's, uh, I would love to. I would love to. And yeah, I'll, I'll let you handle that movie. I don't need to. Oh, I just, I'm, in, I'm Australian Imperial Force. Okay, cool. Oh. Um, Okay. Very cool. So is that uh, First World War? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. The Anzacs. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, what historical period do you want depicted more? I assume he means uh, he or she means in media. Yeah. Um, um, it's such a double-edged sword, though, isn't it? Because yeah, every time yeah. you get a piece of media, it basically it just gives yeah. people bad ideas. Yeah. Well, like flipping yeah. people all the time ask me about my opinion on Turn, which I have not seen, but I've seen one battle scene from it, and it features yeah. these two lines of soldiers marching up within like 15 yards of each other and just standing there waiting for an order. What the hell? Like, this is the good series that people like? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. like... In a way, I kind of want people to stop paying attention to history as much. Yeah, like, for sure. Leave it to people like us. Stop having Hollywood get involved. Uh, awesome says, if Brandon guest starred in Checkmate Lincolnites, what character would he play? I saw a lot of people in the comments talking about, or in the chat, talking about how I beat Colonel Fremantle. Although, to be fair, he wasn't really there in an official capacity. He was just kind mm -hmm. of a tourist who was, like, vibing with the Confederates. Yeah. Like, hey, yeah, you guys yeah, yeah. want a battle? I'll watch. Um, yeah, yeah. No, he literally, yeah. I mean, he just like showed up in Houston and was like, I'm yeah. going to look around, you know, and yeah, yeah. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, I think, I, I think, you there, you know, there could be a, uh, you know, I think if, if you ever were, uh, you know, if you ever were like in town when I was shooting one or, or whatever, uh, I think uh, something could be, you know, there's, there's always kind of the, the comparison that a lot of uh, Confederate sympathizers make between the Confederacy and sort of the rebels in the War of Independence. Um, oh, and, I'm, yeah, and I'm sure actually. you could probably, you that know, that would be a pretty cool connection. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. A, uh, you know, a red coat could show up and, and, and disabuse, uh, Johnny Reb of that particular notion. Um, yes. uh, although, but yeah, although, I mean, although I'm afraid I actually don't have a red coat uniform anymore. Oh, but, really? Uh, really? Uh, I, I left the organization that I was with, so I have oh, to, okay. I have to find a new group, but, yeah, uh, but sure, there are possibilities sure. there. And actually I've been sure. thinking like it's been idle in the back of my mind doing a British observer's impression for the American Civil War. So like, didn't you already do a, a um, didn't you already do a video about that? I, yeah, I did do a video about that way yeah. back. They basically just like, why did the Europeans care? And the answer was because the yeah. Civil War was big. <laughs> yeah. 
because <laughs> it was like kind of a big deal. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, oh, this is a fun one. Um, oh. Sam says, I was curious what the proudest video that you guys have made on your channel so far is or what we think is mm. our best video. What, what's yours? Oh, see, I was going to let you go first so I could look at my video list. Oh, uh, um, uh, so mine, I think, uh, 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 bar none, is uh, in defense of Puritanism. Uh, I am I am immensely proud of that video. I worked extremely hard on it. Um, I mean, there's other sort of stuff that, like, you know, I think, like, Frozen 50s Man, obviously, uh, worked really hard on, and I'm very happy with with how both of those have turned out so far. Um, uh, and, uh, and then also my... Um, uh, my uh, silver play button unboxing video with the uh, face melt. Uh, I'm, I, I really loved working on yeah, that. Yeah, that, that was, that was good. That was really yeah, good. and I just really, really love that one. Uh, but those aren't, you know, Frozen 50 Man and, and a jokey unboxing video. That's not, you know, history. Mm -hmm. And I think it just in terms of like both kind of history and and uh, historiography and, and just kind of research and analysis, primary sources, uh, 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 and and also just the cinematography as well and the filmmaking aspect, I think, uh, in defense yeah. of Puritanism is, is probably the best thing that, that I have on my channel. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. hmm. I mean, see, this is an easier question for you to answer than myself, I think, because honestly, you put a lot more work into your content. Yours is more of like, in, like your individual projects are more of like a complete product, so to say, whereas I feel like my videos are more just like interesting little bits of history like sure yeah that, uh, or how to how to describe like uh, you just you basically you just put a lot more production value into your individual product than i'd mm -hmm. ever be able to do um and so it's hard to say like which one i'd feel the most proud of in that way um i think some of the most important videos that i've made and the content that i enjoy making the most things like um honestly uh like the racism review in the patriot i think was a very important video that i that i think yeah. made some very good points I think that the video actually, there's one that I made way back in the day, just sort of like a little mini thing because I didn't know what to make a video about at the time, where mm -hmm. I brought up an account by uh, or from the recollections of Rifleman Harris. And I sort of read about a story of a widow finding her dead husband in after after a mm -hmm. battle. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember actually almost crying in that video because the story is very moving. Um, yeah. So I think things yeah. like that are very good, like very important to talk about. Um, Definitely. Oh, and and I, I have actually, I've had, um, I once had a German veteran actually reach out to me and say that he appreciated my video on the song Ich hatte einen Kameraden. Um, oh, really? Talking about how he's really glad to see someone helping to like bring that song out of the Nazi spotlight that it has on YouTube. Sure. Um, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Things, like, things like that, um, mm -hmm. whenever I can speak to, oh, like, like the, sorry, I'm looking at my list now. Um, or like the video where I talk about how explanation is not justification for war crimes. I like that. That's a lot. really good one. Yeah, that's yeah a really, really good just one. anything where I I get a chance to talk about those deeper ideas as opposed yeah. to just like, um, you know, what kind of gun did they use? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. That, yeah. So. No, well, you know, actually, I think my my uh, uh, favorite of your or one of my favorite of your videos that that kind of does that and sort of does those deeper things, and I also think is very like is also a great. Uh, piece of just of independent analysis by you as a historian is is when you uh this is older but like you compared and contrasted um the memory of the first world war in uh the uk with the memory of the american civil war in oh the South. yeah and yeah. and that's and that's kind of an obscure video i don't think many people have like seen it but but it's but no. it's really good and you and like and the conclusions that you come to are not like you know you're not just regurgitating uh, hmm. historical consensus you're like kind of an analyzing oh. this yourself and then you make some like, really interesting connections um oh, well thank you yeah 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 i really like that one too uh um should we uh should we move on to our next question here or um what yeah, do you think it, it, it's yeah. it's your your show folks. all right okay all right all right uh okay so um all right dun, dun. here we go question again Not this is question dun. number three for brandon uh, so this is, this is, a, this is, this is a date, this is a year, um, but I'll take oh, no. the decade or the general, you know, I will take, a, okay, I will, right. you know, half points yeah. will be in effect. I, I will take a general answer. Uh, what year did the British army change their uniform from traditional red to khaki? Oh, also just a uh, Casey D in the chat. there, like, oh my, they're, uh, you're, you're, you're making good stuff today, my friend. <laughs> oh, oh God. Oh, oh, um, we'll to, all right. Don't let them distract you here. No, don't, uh, I won't. I won't. It was. I know. It was after the first Boer War, the Battle of like something or other. Kopf, uh, like a bunch of guys got ambushed. And it was awful. Um, 
like the entire war was basically just like a skirmish by a lot of other standards, a lot like a little frontiersy type thing. Um, you said officially changed, so I don't have to worry about like yeah. the Indian army because because the British soldiers in India were using khaki like way before the regular army actually was applying it. Um, when was the first World War, war being fought? It was eighteen. It was was it before or after the Anglo Zulu War? I know it's in the eighteen seventy. I uh, well, okay, no is a dangerous word to use there. I'm pretty sure it was like either seventeen. I'm sorry, eighteen. Oh no, sec, mm -hmm. 80s early 1880s is that okay. your final answer oh you always ask me that and I don't <laughs> to, I, yeah i'll say that uh no 1902. Oh. 1902 1902 really yes yeah surprised me too after the earlier. second boer war was the official i guess i'm thinking of more frontiersy type stuff then of like yeah, just yeah. temporary it surprised me too. I, I, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I, I, huh. I did not know this. It was surprisingly late. Surprisingly late. However, uh, I do not think that 1880s was quite no, close enough no. to nail the point. <laughs> no, it is so, not. Brandon was wrong. Atouche is still in the lead. Um, this is this is exciting. <laughs> I'm having fun. This uh, is fun. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right. Uh, I'm glad to see though everybody. that a lot of the guesses in the chat were like similar to what I was thinking as well. Yeah, no, that's yeah, that's no. Uh, uh, so, uh, where do all these 18th century myths come from, Brandon? Um, honestly, a lot. Of, actually, is it the same things how Renaissance people made the previous generation look stupid? I think yeah. so. A lot of this stuff is just like Victorian guys trying to figure out what made America so great and special. And they're looking back and like, oh, yeah, like unlike those, you know, Brits with their nowadays. Well, I, yeah. Uh, sorry. Let me rephrase. But like when a lot of these early myths are coming about, it's after the Napoleonic Wars and the British Empire is like ascendant. They have reached like the zenith, you know, they are the be all end all of imperial power in the world. Mm -hmm. So first of all, when people say like, oh yeah, the Americans, you know, they're plucky militiamen beat the greatest army in the world. Like, I'm sorry, since when was the British army the greatest in the world? Like by the end of the war, did they have some of the best light infantry in the world? Ab yes, absolutely. Yeah. But like, if France, it like, say, for example, say the heavens above, God opened the clouds. It's a very uncomfortable motion for opening the clouds. <laughs> I, just, I just, anyways. <laughs> um, God, God spread wide the clouds. and Terry and, Gilliam God. Uh, yeah. it's a Terry Gilliam and, animated um, God. And, and, a, and a little parcel of land rose up between France and England. I don't think that there was a single time in British yeah. history, honestly, that they would have been able to resist the French invaders. Like yeah. the British army has been has been very professional and very elite, but definitely not like the world's greatest by most of the measures. And they were yeah. looking to the French for inspiration on how they were going to do things up until, honestly, the Franco-Prussian War. Most of Europe was. I mean, other myths like, you know, um, like, you know, uh, 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 so, I mean, basically, that was like it was all the militia and that the Continental Army didn't do all very much. We see accounts of that slowly being, I believe that my girlfriend just got to the portion of the video where I did the spreading thing. And just, yeah, um, <laughs> the comments. Oh, God. The comments, um, dear God, the comments. But uh, well, is, like, well like Brandon, whole... is, is, is like, um, is American nationalism like a part of this at all? Or, or just like the, uh, just because I know, you know, 18th century is often just, you know, patriots, you know, uh, freedom. Yeah, yeah. And is that sort of, I mean, um, uh, just not, not necessarily even like making it look stupid, but, but, uh, mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, the Victorians, um, uh, uh, very well may have done, but I feel like there is this sort of, you know, idea, uh, at least in America of like the 18th century as being like the logo on the Sam Adams, uh, bottle, yeah, you know, yeah, where I mean, it's kind of become commodified would, and sort of, you know, and, I think and, it would be really interesting to see, and I've not done research into this, but like, a, a, like a search into the the use of the language of the American Revolution and just like a rise in just the, its general popularity. Like, I would I would guess I I would I'd be I would be willing to put money on it possibly becoming more common around like the Teddy Roosevelt years, like like eighteen mm eighties -hmm. nineties, like you know Spanish American War in the Philippines and all that. Um, yeah. through the first world war because that's like when we start to see like the old american ways die off and the new like american imperialism uh nationalism and yada 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 
all yeah, that yeah. stuff becoming more popular. I, I'd be interested to I'd be interested in knowing if we see a spike in those years. Similarly, in how, as you've mentioned earlier, um, the Confederacy, for example, really started to revive and bring up a lot of those foundational myths and even perhaps invent some of them for their own purposes. You know, our second war yeah. of independence and all that kind of thing. Totally. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, um, a lot of it was myth making in the Victorian era, to be to be certain. For sure. Uh, yeah, they were good at that, those Victorians. Uh, yeah, <laughs> kind of mythologized everything. Uh, but, all right, let's get through uh, a few of these super chats before we move on here. Um, so, There's Frank, so many. Uh, Frank, thanks for the five bucks, man. Uh, my boyfriend and I are big fans. Not in honor of the new Vikings show. Oh, God. Uh, oh. <laughs> who has the favorite facial hair? I mean, yeah, the, the hair in that those in that show or those shows is like, you know, uh, quite an offense. Uh, what's favorite facial hair in historical fiction films or TV? I mean, I just think the goofy uh, fake beards in uh in gettysburg are are you know can't can't really oh be beat uh they're just so silly um uh uh thanks for the 20 bucks uh, yo my favorite history boys oh. would you be considering uh, doing a vid on the life of edgar Allan poe um maybe i don't know i don't know that's not my really my area of expertise yeah that's um, not particularly i'm afraid uh yeah. if, if something very interesting came to light about him that that was connected to anything that i did work on then sure but uh yeah man. yeah for sure for sure um should hugh get a degree in history brandon <laughs> that's a very yes. good question because uh my my master's in modern history got me a job in insurance that then i promptly left uh as soon as youtube became viable for me I will say, yeah. here's the thing, Hugh if, Hugh, if you really like, gen, I, I think I do have some actual wisdom here that I can impart. Uh, so you can shoot me an email, brandsonapp at nativeoak.org, if you actually want me to like write up a little response for you. But I will give you a piece of wisdom that I do think is actually good and fair that a professor said to me in my undergraduate. He said that um, that the deg that the, the degree will get you the interview. And that's yeah. really all it's good for. The piece of paper is going to get you an interview. Everything else is what you learn in the course of your degree. That's what's going to actually get you the job. Um, it's all about how you advertise yourself. If you say education, bachelor's in ancient history, and then you just apply for a finance job, they're going to be like, why the hell do I care about what? Why? No. But if you can sell it to them. Yeah. And, and I don't know exactly how to do that necessarily in, those, in that particular circumstance, but it's possible. It's all about how you sell yourself. And also it might be worthwhile to pair the history degree with something else. A lot of people will use it as a launching off point for careers in journalism, in mm -hmm. law school, in yeah. yada, yada, yada. Things like yeah, that. yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, it is like on a just bare bones kind of practical level. It's just kind of better to have it if you can afford one. You know, it's better to have a degree than not. Um, yeah. cause yeah, exactly. I mean, just, gen just generally, like even just having a history degree, it's just like, it's, it's stupid. It shouldn't matter, but you know, with it, just it's getting the new a job standard, in any like, field, it's yeah. the new minimum for a lot of positions exactly, unfortunately, exactly. to have a four year degree. Yeah. Um, I will be back in 30 seconds, Brandon. Give me one second. Hold down the fort. Uh -oh. Um, it's, he just left. Uh, hi there, everyone. Um, do I have anything to talk about? Um, this is entirely unexpected. Uh, All right. Da, 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 okay. That wasn't that long. All right. There's, uh, there's more people there's... watching this live stream than I've ever had on my gaming live streams. And then you <laughs> leave? What the heck? Is, what, what's that? Uh, I needed to get a, uh, a crushed uh, seltzer from that I that I got oh, when I was okay. uh, really fucked up on Mardi Gras day. Um, uh, all right. Let's open this and see if it explodes. Ready? Oh. Okay, it didn't explode. Oh, All right, we're good. Okay, very good. Uh, Casey, my God, that's incredibly generous. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Casey, you loved my video demonstrating the road agent spin. Remember your last live stream? You had a few more moves. Uh, <laughs> I did. I mean, just to make more contact, like I mean, maybe I don't know. I I really just have the one move. Uh, I mean, I can I can you know I can flip. I can do the spin. I can you know I can do all that. But that's uh, you know I'm I'm pretty good with with just sort of gun tricks in that way. But uh, um, you know, I mean, Hey, maybe next time I'll be out in Arizona at, uh, Carl's house and we'll, you know, I'll, I'll spin it and shoot it and hopefully not kill myself. 
Um, right. Shall we move on to the next uh, question? Yes. Let I us realize do it. Time, time is going by quickly. Although I, know. I do have like, I have all night. I, I can, I can be here. So yeah, I do too. I don't, I, but I, you know, I, I, it, it's, it's a performance, right? It's, it's like, it takes social energy to do these live streams. So I don't yeah. want to like overextend well, us, you know? Um, all right. But uh, I mean, not, I mean, no, I could talk to you forever, Brandon, but you know, just sort of like, oh. You and you and a thousand right. people, you know, maybe not so much, but yeah, but well, let's move it's on. It's a little uh, bit of a different dynamic. You know, we, we sure, can't express sure. our, our genuine true feelings for one. yes, yes, exactly. <clears throat> Question exactly. number three. Uh, oh, wait, are, did you... oh I, it's, it's my question now. Okay, okay, sorry. Down. All right. <laughs> question number three to the to the dismay of Johnny Reb, and please send him my passive aggressive and overly haughty regards, if you please. Um, I wrote that down. That was that was one of my three jokes for the, that, that I wrote. Yeah. <laughs> Brandon, there are an the awful jokes. lot of yeah, there are an awful lot of quotes out there that pretty soundly crush the whole it was about terrorists, not slaves, thing regarding the Civil War. Uh, one of the most iconic of these quotes comes from Alexander Stevens in 1861 when he said of the new Confederate government that, quote, I apologize, I might have to say a gamer word here, quote, its foundations are laid, its cornerstone rests upon the great truth that, dot, 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 the great truth that what? And more importantly here, uh, how did Stevens describe the role of Black, uh, of black enslavement in this quote? Like, how did he... Uh, how did he describe what slavery was, not to the white man, but to the black? Mm. Uh, so uh, I believe I, I have this one in the bag. Uh, he said yeah, that uh, uh, <laughs> he said uh, that uh, you know, apologies, uh, slight slight gamer word, certainly antiquated word. He said the Negro is not uh, equal to the white man, um, and that that and that slavery is uh, the black man's uh, natural and moral condition. God um, damn! Yeah, uh, that, yeah, that's exactly, yeah, that that's that, that, that you. This is the word subordination to the superior yes. race, but otherwise, that's like word for word. I was gonna accept uh, like you're basically saying, oh, it's like a natural state for them, and I was gonna give you the the full quote, and I was gonna feel smart at least a little bit, and then okay, uh, <laughs> I have to find more obscure stuff. I, I see how it plays. <laughs> no, no, okay. it's fine, and. Oh, leading by two whole points. My God. All right. Uh, no, but uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, no, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's good. It's good to win, Brandon. I can't, hot creamy farts yeah, can yeah, get there yeah. 400 bucks. Yeah. Um, no, but yeah, that is a truly, uh, that is a truly, it is, it is a, a vile, horrible speech. Um, yes, uh, vile, awful, no good, horrible speech. Uh, and, um, and yeah, the, I think uh, actually um, cynical historian in, in one of his civil war videos, he, uh, featured the transcript of the Cornerstone speech because what the reason we like have have it is because somebody was in the audience writing it down and they wrote down when people clapped and so oh, it's this wow. uh, yeah yeah so basically there it's literally like after that line it's like you know brackets mm. you know uproarious applause and brackets oh god it's like yeah yeah nice. it's, it's really yeah yeah could you imagine being in that room you know it's I mean it's like when you watch uh, uh, or or when you see like um, old films of like minstrel shows, you know, from like the thirties yeah. and, and sort of like early sound. And you just sort of see some guy up there just doing like this, like horrible stereotype. And, and you just mm -hmm. hear the polite laughter, like, ha, 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 ha. Just sort of the yeah. tinkling of glasses, just like very polite early 20th century laughter. It's like, Whoa, yeah. you know? Um, yeah. It's and, definitely uh, like yeah. a weird disconnect from anything. That For we, sure. Yeah. 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 With, without a doubt, without a doubt. I mean, uh, uh, well, cool. Well, I'm pretty happy. Um, uh, <laughs> this is going great for me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, um, would you, uh, would we consider doing a, uh, a video on little bighorn? Which one? Little bighorn. That's, um, that's like American, that's like the Western, like Indian wars, right? Yeah. That's Custer. We're Custer. That's Custer. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's Custer. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's a bit more in my purview than, than Brandon's. Uh, but, yeah. uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, um, you know, though, honestly, like I, I, I love the West and, uh, but I feel like I have, I have a much more sort of amateur sort of, um, sort of amateur story or like just sort of hobbyist sort of interest in it. Like that's mm. kind of with me with like ancient history too. Like I know enough mm. about it to like sound smart at a party, but I don't have, like, it's not my special, it's not my special, yeah. you know what I mean? I, I, I don't like, it's not something that I've like 
really dived into to primary sources on and, and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Do you have anything uh, like like that, Brandon? Like something that you like oh, yeah. enjoy reading about for pleasure, but that you're not like an expert in? I think um, a lot of like Victorian wars. Um, like I'd say, honestly, like as far as the aesthetic is concerned and everything, I'm really interested in like the 19th century more even than the 18th century, but yeah. I don't know anywhere near enough about it to like actually make claims and whatnot. Um, sure. Like that's why I watch like British muzzle loaders and other channels like that to learn about like, you know, how are they using the these strange breech loading firearms and you know yeah. things like that. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely Victorian stuff. Yeah, totally. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, and and people sort of, uh, I guess, sometimes I, I disappoint people with this uh, uh, sort of knowledge, but I feel like my sort of greatest area of specialization is uh, is 17th century New England, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, and and um, uh, sort of, you know, because obviously, you know, I'm sort of known for Civil War stuff. So a lot of the time, if I meet people in person or if I'm communicating with somebody, they'll sort of want to talk about about the Civil War, and um, and uh, and and uh yeah and i sort of like and i feel like that's sort of you know i think that probably if i had to sort of pick a period that i felt most qualified to talk about it would be like 1650 to 1700 mm -hmm. in like yeah. southern new england because like mm -hmm. i think and and i think those are like and honestly i mean i don't know if this is the case for you brandon because you know you obviously we both read a lot of like fairly antiquated primary sources uh, yeah. in, in English specifically, right? So like, mm -hmm. and I feel like that's like the 17th century is almost like uh, the furthest back you can, you can like, without yeah, language where training. it's still, like you can still pick up the book and basically yeah. get the gist and of just what read they're it. saying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. and read it and understand what they're talking about. And obviously it kind of gets bigger the more, or the, uh, the uh, your uh, comprehension kind of, it's like learning like a dialect or something. It's not like learning a whole yeah. new language, but it's like, you know, it's like, uh, you know, moving to, uh, I don't know, to like Gloucester and, and just like being around people yeah. with the, the Gloucester, Massachusetts accent, right? Yeah, it's like exactly. learning an accent. And it, but it's, but it is something you don't necessarily need like, uh, uh, like sort of formal education to sort of get a handle on. So that's kind of what yeah. I like doing. Cause it's like, it's almost like the furthest back that, that I can like go and still kind of mm -hmm. have a foot in there, you know, and still have a kind of a, toe yeah, there. exactly. There's yeah. still, there's still a certain familiarity because it's closer to our world at yeah. least linguistically than not. Um, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, what, yeah, why then, is Brandon F on the stream? I'm taking over. It's my <laughs> channel now. Uh, because we're buddies, dude. Uh, I like to have my friends up. Uh, so the Bitter Steel says the Union Army of 1864 under Grant was the greatest army in the world at that specific time. Thoughts? Oh, wow. Well, uh, what does greatest army mean? How are we qualifying this? Are we talking the largest, most technologically advanced? Are we talking the best trained? Are we talking? I think the most you know. badass. Oh, oh, well, well, in which case, um, I mean, I would say like probably um, just as far as like overall scale combined with actual experience um, yeah. and whatnot, uh, you know, the union at that point and this is again more your wheelhouse, but like by that point, they're fighting like a flipping proto first world war. They're using rail lines yeah, yeah. to move supplies across massive front lines. Uh, mm -hmm. They were using entrenching and modern artillery. They you know, like all these different things. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, for no, sure. I mean, no, it's, uh, uh, I'd say so, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I think you could certainly, um, I think you could certainly sort of argue that. I don't know if, uh, I mean, but I also don't know, was there any, like gigantic war going on in China at that time, you know, like the, uh, well, like that's another fucking huge blind spot in my knowledge, at least as East Asian history. And I mean, every time I, I, I would look, say I glance over there, there's always some, you yeah. know, gigantic war with millions of people going on. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like 15 million people. Dead for yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, exactly. with, with that, although, uh, I mean, even if there was, I would point to things like the boxer rebellion as proof that like it, that wouldn't sure. really be sufficient because like, yeah. This, the, the level of technology, the Western military tradition, the um, experience yeah. and all that, like it, it's a different, it's a different ball game. So to yeah, say, absolutely. Yeah, it's kind of a knife, um, knife to a gunfight type of thing for sure. Yeah. And like, well, things like Isandalwana happened, they're still the exception. You know, we don't see uh, like native armies beating Western modern day, whatever, moving on. Yeah, no, totally. Uh, um Thanks for the 10 bucks, Fata Luke. Uh, you've, you've wanted to make a video about failed attempts by the French to colonize Florida. That sounds interesting. Um, I'm actually going to be in Florida uh, in not too long. I'm going on vacation there. Um, I'm so sorry. Uh, no, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Uh, 
It's got to be great. Yeah, but I haven't spent much time there, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting to know the state. Um, okay, let's uh, go through a few more here. Fake Scour, thank you again. Uh, uh, curious, in your respective eras of history, what non-great power slash less uh, uh, spotlighted or kind of, I guess, more sort of peripheral, uh, smaller countries' history is the most interesting? So which, like, which, I guess, which country of the 18th century that doesn't oh. really get much love is, is, like, the most interesting to you? That's a good question. That is a really good question. Um, hmm. If you have an answer, then go for it. So I have to think about this for a little bit. Um, you know, I, uh, bless my, I mean, I think that um, in terms of the Civil War, I think sort of uh, what was going on in Canada was pretty interesting. It was very like, that was a very uh, uh, transformative time for Canada. And um and, and it sort of played into the Civil War in a, yeah. in a few interesting ways. Uh, some Confederate uh, um, irregulars actually invaded northern Vermont uh, from Canada at one point. Um, uh, they didn't really do much damage, but they like is took over like a the, county. Is that like part of the Fenian raids? Uh, it was, no, it was a different thing. Uh, I'm oh. pretty sure. But it was, but it was the same idea. Uh, it was, yeah, you know, okay. invade the north from the north, you know. But yeah, it yeah. was like, it was like these oh. Confederate uh, uh, irregulars that like went up to, to Quebec, went across the border and like took over a county courthouse in like northern Vermont. I think oh. it was Lincoln County or something. Um, oh. uh, but uh, but yeah, and they basically like effectively controlled the county for like a couple weeks, uh, I think, before like oh. they were able to get some troops up there. Um, uh, so yeah, so maybe so, uh, that, uh, that'd be my... Uh, here's uh, really one that ca caught my eye. Uh, to shade, trips, troops from New England served in the Parliament Army in the English Civil War. Was there a point when uh, Americans had actual familiarity with 17th century Britain? Um, I learned that U.S. history teachers don't like teaching then, or, or maybe they don't, they don't have time or whatever. Uh, yes, yeah. yes. So uh, that's a great question. Yes, those, the, the you know, um, uh, the sort of interregnum and the Puritan movement in England was constantly and deeply connected to uh, New England uh, and to the Puritans there as they were constantly going back and forth. There are Puritans who left Massachusetts and, and New England to go fight in the Civil War. Um, uh, there was, uh, uh, there were people who sort of like, um, uh, who sort of like went back to, um, uh, to like, you know, there's like who were families, right, separated. Uh, some went to New England, some stayed behind and families would like have obligations. They would be like hauled up to service by parliament or by Cromwell and just be like, you need to like, do this thing for me or whatever. And they say, okay, brother, come back from Massachusetts. We need to like do this thing. And it was interesting because like a lot of these people's lives were just like completely uprooted, right? It was it was sort of like, uh, uh, you know, you'd like go to this, there are a couple uh, folks. Um, uh, I don't exactly recall who exactly, but they're like fairly prominent sort of uh, magistrates and, and some early governors of like Massachusetts who's, who were basically called um, uh, called back to England um, and, uh, and basically had to like uproot their entire lives, right? They, they had moved to, to, uh, the new world. They had, they had started a plantation. They had like started families and stuff. They had, they had built homes and communities. And all of a sudden they get a letter from a relative saying Cromwell needs you. He wants you here to like work huh. for him. And they were like, okay. And they just like left their lives. And then they were gone for wow. decades if they ever came back. Like, um, uh, and you know, and there was a lot of like, really interesting letters that they would kind of write back and forth, like, you know, husbands who were called off to service in England, writing back to their wives and kids in America who would basically say like, you know, you know, even if we don't, we're probably never going to see each other again, but uh, hopefully we're going to both go to heaven. So, you know, but nothing I can do about it. Cromwell needs oh. me, you know, it's just kind of like, yeah. Also one of those very kind of weird historical things where it's like, damn, you know, <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, oh. kind of the duty over oh. everything, you know, duty and the movement and, and the mm -hmm. Protestant religion over fuck my family. It doesn't matter. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm pledged to the cause, you know, it's just a very, uh, interesting very thing. interesting. Yeah. That, that's yeah. all yeah. new information to me. I mean, I guess it's, yeah. I just never thought about that in particular. Yeah. That, that's really interesting. Huh? Yeah. It's cool. Shit. It's cool. Shit. Well, next, uh, should we move on to our next questions here? Uh, yes, although I just want to point out, there's a guy in the chat who will who will very often be in my live streams, um, and his name in that is the fake Atunche Films. For a while, okay. it was just outright Atunche Films, and I would and people would be like, "Whoa, was that really?" I'm like, "No, everyone, no. it's not him." Um, but um, I, he's he's there too. It's one hi hi fake. Atunche. Well, you know, uh, get off my stop fucking pissing down my back, dude. Oh. Uh, Oh, oh, oh no! Oh, <laughs> Back the fuck up, dude! Uh, stop Anyways. stealing my identity. And uh, who's uh, uh, whose question is it now? <laughs> no, he's probably a nice guy. He's probably a nice guy. Um, yeah, but nice. Uh, but I'm glad that he that he stopped doing doing that because that's obnoxious. Well, yeah. um, okay, uh, okay, all right. 
Here is my next okay. question from Brandon. All right. After after Major General Sir Edward Pakenham's defeat and death oh. at the Battle of New Orleans, okay. his very famous brother-in-law, who was also a general, remarked that we have but one consolation, that he fell as he lived in the honorable discharge of his duty. His very famous brother-in-law, who's also a general, then placed the blame of the defeat on Admiral Cochrane, who was the uh, sort of commander of naval forces in the New Orleans campaign. Who was this famous brother-in-law? I got so excited when you said Packenham because I was reading about the battle, like about the Battle of New Orleans earlier today and everything, but I don't know the name of the brother. Um... You you know this. You oh, do know his this. name was Packenham. No. Um, no, no. You you do know this. You do know this. I do know this. Yes, you absolutely. That's what you say. Um, no, you're 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 just it's it's nerves. He is the he is very very famous, also a general. Okay. In 1815. In 1815, unbelievably famous, Unbelievable. the most badass general who ever lived. Does he not have the same surname then? No, he is not commonly no. known by his by his name. He is not commonly known by his title. Obviously, I mean, you're hinting at Arthur Wellesley, I feel like, but it can't be him because Wellesley, that's a very diff that's a different family. Other Pakenham. Well, bro brother-in-law. Brother. Oh, brother-in-law, you said. Oh, is it Arthur Wellesley then? It is, it is the Duke of Wellington. Oh, oh okay. I, I'm trying yes. to think of like, there's a second Pakenham? I never heard of a second Pakenham no, no. before. No, I see. I okay. knew you knew this. You were just, you were overthinking it. You were overthinking. I mean, once it. again, you were being very, very kind to me in this. But oh, okay. <laughs> no, again, no, because I, I didn't. Because I knew that you knew it. I knew that you knew okay. it. It was just, it, it's just, it's just the quiz show nerves getting to you. I, I, I can see oh, the gears turning. Sure, I knew sure you knew it. it I knew you knew I'm it. I'm sure that's what it is. Uh, all right then. All right, Gosh, hit, hit me with yours. Then, all right. So this is one of those questions I'm said like it, it isn't really overtly historical, but I thought it was related to what you do. And okay. now, once again, I'm looking at this and be like, yeah, this is insanely um, obvious and uh, not at all difficult. And what the heck, Andy? Um, <laughs> in the parody film Gods and Generals, in Stonewall Jackson's death scene, he's having hallucinations before his death. What is he imagining and what is he saying? Uh, so, uh, this, this is, this is a fun one. It's, uh, uh, he is saying, uh, uh, this is what he actually said. Well, uh, the, well, the first part is what he actually said, but it was, um, bring up that column, bring up that column. Uh, mm -hmm. but he was, he was, he was mumbling in real life. He was mumbling to bring up that column that didn't happen. But then the next thing he said did actually happen, which is let us cross over, let us cross over the river and rest under the shade of the trees. What was he doing? He was like, oh, one of these sorts of things that seems to, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Big that old blue eyes right. under the camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's mm, it. Yeah, big old blue eyes, just like Jesus had. Uh, oh, of course. Anyway. And the yeah. giant beard and the very white skin. And yeah, no. Oh, very, yes, yeah, yes, very, yes. Very, 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 very white. Very white. Uh, the the dedication another... to, to the Southern Confederacy, just like Jesus had, as we oh, all know. Yes, of course, of yeah. course, yeah. Uh, perfect. Uh, well, this is, this is going great. Uh, yeah, this is going. <laughs> I need a prop. I, I don't have any. <laughs> Every, everything I own is in Massachusetts still. I have the. Ah, the well, there you go. Yeah, you need a gun. Um, mm -hmm. uh, well, cool. So let's see. Um, uh, this is an interesting question. Do you think it was possible for any of the others? I got you. Any of the British colonies in North America, Quebec, Nova Scotia, Florida, et cetera, to declare independence uh, in the, in, I assume, the American War of Independence? Uh, so Florida during the American War of Independence was Spanish. It, it wait, no. No, it wasn't. It was the Spanish took it over after, right? I should know this because I was literally just reading about Florida history because I'm going there. Um, so uh, was it was it British or was it Spanish? No, it wasn't. No, it did not. It was British. Florida was British. But you know why it didn't rebel? It was because um, uh, there was no reason for it to. It didn't want to. It, it was full of loyalists. Yeah. Uh, Florida, um, uh, Pensacola was the biggest uh, settlement in Florida during the American War of Independence. And it didn't, uh, and like, and it was full of soldiers and like merchants with with uh, business ties to uh, England and to Jamaica and, you know, with very loyal colonies. So it was very much more in the Caribbean orbit. And, you know, I mean, we have to remember, of course, that like the, uh, oh, nice, nice. 
I was, I was trying uh, to get a prop, but it can't fit over the headset. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, but, uh, yeah, yeah, we have to remember, of course, that, you know, I mean, it was, was uh, uh, you know, yeah, the, kind of the further south you go, kind of the more more loyal uh, people were to, to yeah. Um But, uh, and then as far as Quebec, I mean, you know, hey, they've never been terribly fond of, of the English. So, uh, mm. uh, and I'm not actually sure that, that I don't really know much about Quebec uh, in, during the- I mean, I don't like it's before. like theoretically things could have gone. I turned orange for some reason when I left. You notice that? What what happened there? No, I didn't. It was probably just color correction and- Yeah, but um, mm. uh, I mean, the, the Americans or the rebels, I should say, did launch an actual raid into Canada and nothing, like they were expecting, ah, yes, our brothers will raise up in arms and they really didn't. And um, it was just a disaster, so yeah. Yeah, so like I've had thing had a num we can tweak a number of different little factors to make that happen, but you know. Mm. Yeah, totally. Uh fun fact, the general northeastern region of New South Wales is also called New England. Look at that. Um, I guess I, I'm pretty behind. I must be pretty behind on the super chats here. Uh if if they're still talking about Australia. They're going um, quick. They are, they are. And thank you guys again so much for all these. Uh, have you heard about the time in 1866 when the Irish army marched into Canada from upstate New York with the goal of holding it hostage? Uh, I mean, isn't that uh, the Fenian raids or am I on That might be here? part of it. I mean, I know the Fenian yeah, raids yeah. were like all through like the 60s and like early 70s. So yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And, and yeah, the Fenian raids also not terribly my ex uh, area of expertise. Uh, but yeah, there's it's cool shit going on in Canada again. Uh, this is a cool question. Uh, any interest in Etienne uh, Brulé, first European explorer to uh, journey past St. Lawrence River in what is known as Canada? I, you know, I actually, I misread. I don't know much about him. Uh, I'm always interested in early explorations and early contact between uh, Native Americans and Europeans. Uh, but uh, I, I actually thought you were talking about another Etienne um Etienne, uh, fuck, uh, Dubois or Etienne Boule or something. It's a very oh. similar name, but he's, I worked at the cemetery where he's buried. He's buried here in New Orleans. He's the guy who, uh, uh, Etienne, or maybe it was another Etienne Boule, but he was, uh, I know there's was, a, he was like the inventor of refined sugar. He was the inventor of refined sugar. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and of course, because of the times in which he lived, you know, that, uh, uh, was really bad news for all of the enslaved people in Louisiana. So not the, not the, uh, <laughs> Not the proudest legacy. Uh, okay, so uh, Brandon, any interest in the Boer Awards? Yes, Boer Awards? that is like, it's. A, I want to start up an impression eventually of Second Boer War. I think that'd be really cool. First Boer War is kind of like, kind of boring. It's just, it's a small like little rebellion and, you know, how the, the British lose. So it's not as much fun. But um, the, I think the Second Boer War is really interesting. Uh, just the, the dynamic of the mounted cavalry fighting is sort of like, insurgency kind of it's basically you can see a lot of parallels to like you know modern day american efforts in like iraq and afghanistan how it's just like sure. it's just really not working unless you want to get your hands really dirty and do a lot of unsavory stuff um yeah. i did a lot of work for my um my undergraduate dissertation on the concentration camps in the second Boer war and mm -hmm. like how some of the brits were like you know like just completely apathetic to what was going on. And some people were like genuinely trying to like make them good places, like, like honest to God, refugee camps and other people were like, no, you know, they snipe at us from the bush. I have no, you know, sympathy for these people. And yeah, not the bush, sorry, uh, from the belt. Um, yeah. There's a lot of really interesting dynamics going on there. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's, yeah, it, it definitely, uh, it definitely is something that interests me and I want to do more work on it in, in future, I think. Yeah. Nice. That's awesome. Um, uh, should we, uh, should we move on to our next question here? Yes, sir. All right. Okay. Let's freaking do it. Uh, all right. So, um, here is, oh God. Uh, oh, this is a fun one. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> uh, according to the manual exercise of the Continental <laughs> Army, of the continent. Okay, no, I kind of know the Continentals. I kind of know that. I mean, I have literally, I, I have the 64 like right here, of course. Yes, yes, I yes. I believe that I... is exactly what I am referring to. Uh, oh. A soldier oh. under arms must place his forefinger and thumb where exactly? I wish I had it on the musket so I can show you. The forefinger is going to be like, like, okay, that looks very wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna... Well, I was, no, I was going to say this, this is. Uh, that th this is also 
Hint, mm -hmm. this is also a place where someone making love may place their <laughs> forefinger and thumb. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of language about butts and the cock of the musket and whatnot and, and all that stuff. Uh, but no, uh, when you're standing under arms, you want to have your rear free three fingers oh, um, <laughs> under, <laughs> underneath the butt of the musket. Did he, oh, there he is. Under the butt of musket. Your index finger is going to be kind of like a little bit before it, but not quite. You want to make sure that it isn't underneath because it gives you more control. The thumb, rather, though, is going to be wrapped around, like around the, you know, the front of, of like where it, the uh, where the, the butt plate is like meeting the stock. It's going to be up front. So it's it's yes. one of like these sorts of dealies as you guys have. Yes, it. exactly. I, I and you're supposed to have it reached as far down as is comfortable without constraint. None of this like really high arm nonsense. And now, of course, the heels are meant to be close, but not together. You see, this is my stuff, Andy. This is my stuff. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, yeah, I would have it. I would have accepted butt or butt plate. Uh, what, what, what the exact uh, uh, verbiage in the manual is the swell of the butt. Uh, the swell, so, yes. uh, so yeah, so uh, excellent. Was that, uh, excellent was that the dis disturbing drill or is that the 1764 manual? No, exercise? yes, that, that is the, the, the by the Baron of the Prussia guy. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cause I know that he basically had the same setup as. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. Uh, yeah, excellent, excellent. I was, I was looking forward to, to asking that one. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure you, you just wanted uh, to see me do funny things with the fingers. <laughs> three, 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 anyway, uh, <laughs> so what's your, what's your question for me? All right. Um, once again, I think this is one's a pretty. It might be. It's probably going to be a pretty easy one, especially what after what you said about um, your most proud video. Um, Meta Comet, otherwise known as King Philip, was chief to the Wampanoag tribe of Native Americans in New England in the mid to late 17th century. He led them in an ill-fated war against the English colonists there before being shot by another Native American who was loyal to the colonists, the so-called Praying Indian. What was that man's name? At John first, Alderman. at first, yeah, John Alderman. At first, I thought to myself, like, I can ask him what the name of the war was. And I'm like, Brandon, you <laughs> absolute <laughs> moron. Why would yeah, that dude. be a good question? He obviously you're going, you're going it. so easy on me. You're going so easy on me. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, well I was thinking uh, about like all this you're stuff closing the gap. Pulled from the other guy's video, but uh, <laughs> no, yeah, maybe I should have been clear. I, well, it was kind of, I like, I used your videos like as a basis, like some are yeah, directly yeah. from your videos. And and I, some I, are like I, I have are like I looked at I, I looked at the Wikipedia hard. page of the topic and then looked at the yeah, sources that yeah. they had and read something in the source and then I used that you know yeah so I have uh, I have a number of things coming up though that where I did detract from your videos explicitly I think they're going to get a little tougher for you okay so. okay all right we'll all right uh, yeah well you know I appreciate your I mean this this is a good friend everybody who uh, who throws you softballs and. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah i mean honestly i'm glad like honestly what i kind of expected was like um uh was for, for us both just like to to just not score at all <laughs> or at least for me to like not score at all um because uh, i i was i was i i was expecting some more um like very technical like gear or uniform related civil war question. Oh yeah, you see, like which, I, I wanted which, to avoid that kind of thing. Yeah, well, because because I know nothing about that shit. You know, like that's like uh, so not my bread and butter. But uh, yeah. all right, well, ne next time I'll keep that in mind for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I would love to do this again. That's fun. Uh, oh yeah. my god, this is uh, Brandon. Have you ever heard of uh, Thomas Alexander Cochran? Cool guy, very respected here in Chile. I have, but why in Chile? That is weird. Isn't he the Cochran he I was talking about earlier, the admiral? Or am I? No, I, I think so. Yeah. At least that's the Cochrane mm -hmm. that I know. Yeah. Why in huh, Chile? Why in Chile? That's interesting. Oh, that's something to look up. Yeah. I'll have to look into that. Yeah, it's interesting. Because I was going to say, like, I know the British did do some stuff, like, in, like, along those coastlines, but I'm wondering why yeah. he in particular would be well-respected. Yeah, that's weird. I mean, I, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, here he's kind of a footnote in the story of the Battle of New Orleans, right? I mean, because a lot of the sort of, like, Born the action Lake born and uh, and all that stuff is like very tangential to kind of the main thrust of the story, which is you know uh, in, in 1815 took a little trip, yeah, you know, uh, sort of all about Andrew sense. Jackson and everything like that. And, yeah, and um, I mean it would be cool, you know. I know, uh, I mean you know, I know you just kind of settled in and you've already been doing some traveling, but you know if if and when you ever make it down here, I mean, I, and I know we've talked about this, but like it would be great yes. to like go to the battlefield and. That would be something. yeah. No, that would that would be a lot of fun because you know there's there's a lot of that kind of stuff and yeah, just a lot of um, uh, 
just sort of myth making a lot of sort of 19th and 20th century myth making about Andrew Jackson and like um, mm -hmm. uh, and that's kind of really interesting sort of how the historiography is played out. Um, and uh, stop me if I told you this already, but I was uh, um, it was I, it was like I'd only been in New Orleans for like three months at that point. It was like I just moved here mm -hmm. and um, uh, there it was the 200th anniversary. Oh, he, sorry, just, he, he fought in Chile against the Spanish, apparently. Oh, Interesting. Really? I, yeah, I didn't know about that. All right. That's pretty cool. Um, to look worth looking into. That is cool. That is cool. Uh, but uh, so, yeah, and I went to the 200th anniversary, which was awesome. And um, yeah. uh, but it was like I, I, you know, it was the first time that I ever knew that Louisiana could get like truly cold. It was like, you know, 35 degrees. Oh, just, yeah. Like, it's it's freezing. insane. Like reading some of the accounts of um, I get like George yeah. Robert Glyke, like, one of the guys who wrote a lot of stuff about that campaign, mm -hmm. yeah. um, how the men were just like, you know, it would rain on them in the day. So they had soaked through and then they're like yeah, yeah, yeah. sleeping outside without tentage or other equipment. Um, and like how the frost, which or how the, the rain rather, which is like freeze over freeze overnight, on, yeah. they're just sitting there shivering, freezing cold. They can't have large fires because the Americans are going to bombard them from the coastline. Like it was yeah, a yeah, horrible yeah. campaign, like men yeah. drowning in mud, quite literally on the, like the retreat yeah. back there. Like, whew, yeah, it's, yeah, uh, yeah. That was, it was not a, sad. that was not a good time to be a British soldier in that campaign. No. It, was, it was just brutal. Uh, but yeah, I mean, um, uh, but yeah, so the, the, yeah, it was truly, truly cold and, and frigid, but there was a wonderful speech by the British ambassador, by the then, uh, British ambassador to the United States, uh, who, who, who like gave an amazing speech full of like wonderful wit and like just about like the special relationship and stuff and, and just sort of, yeah. uh, yeah, just kind of that, uh, yeah, very dry kind of British humor. He was just like a really funny guy just saying like, uh, uh, you know, about, about uh, you know, this sort of, uh, you, you may have got us this one time, but you know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and it was just great. And then, yeah, just talking about like, oh, but like, we're so alike and blah, blah, blah. And it was really great. Mm -hmm. It was very sweet, very nice. But yeah, um, I mean, there, there were instances in the battle of, I'm sorry, not the battle of New Orleans, but like the skirmishing that happened beforehand, just yeah. to speak on the idea of them being so alike. There were instances mm -hmm. of like in the dense fog one commander would shout to the others and like feign a different accent. Being yeah, like, yeah, yeah. What yeah. part of the line are you in? Like, yeah. we will come to you. Like, like, don't, don't shoot. We're on your mm -hmm. side. Yeah, it's there's some yeah, crazy totally, stuff totally. going on. Uh, yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, it is, it is pretty wild. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, it was a crazy battle. It, it definitely, you know, just like the the the, and you know, also there's there's lessons to be learned there about like um, uh, about you know the. Because it is sort of thought of, you know, mostly as, you know, oh my God, Andrew Jackson had the brilliant idea that no one had ever thought of to hide yeah. behind a wall, you know, and, whoa. and, and you know, whoa, <laughs> dude, what, you know, yeah. Yeah, and, um, and there's a lot of sort of, uh, whereas, you know, kind of the real reason that the, that the British uh, got creamed so bad was, you know, really just because of the assaults were just so poorly coordinated and they kind of waited yeah. too long. Like how they lost the battle the before it began. Yeah. They forgot yeah. the ladders. They lost the battle yeah, like before it began. Everything began. about the conditions leading up to it. Just, it was a yeah. mess. The entire yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, they sort of easily could have, you know, they, they, they shouldn't have allowed the Americans to entrench in the first place. Right. It was sort of like, yeah. and, and, uh, and sort of like once that happened, they were kind of like, you know, that they, they would have need to have, coordinated their assault sort of exceptionally well yeah. uh, which it would have been it, it w there was no world in which it was going to be another bladensburg where they just like yeah. walk across a bridge and the yeah, americans like nope we're done we're good yeah 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 it, was, yeah, 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 exactly, it wasn't exactly. it wasn't set up to be like that yeah but it, sure, it kind of sure. makes sense that in a way they would expect it because up till that point it had yeah. been enough like they gave up their yeah. capital so easily well okay, like, yeah. yeah everything's a mess but zeal is going to win the day. Like, well, yeah, zeal can't beat him. Yeah, 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 exactly. Precisely. Yeah. No, but for sure. I mean, it's definitely makes sense. I mean, yeah, with the, the with DC and with the Canada campaigns just being like such an unmitigated disaster. And uh, yeah, um, you know, it does kind of make sense that the British would be a little overconfident, but you know, they wouldn't be like, you know, they, they also weren't idiots and they certainly weren't, you know, <laughs> these rustics are so inept, you know. Yeah, yeah they weren't exactly. just like comically overconfident. Yeah, like know, at this point, this this was a yeah. veteran army that had a oh, yeah. lot of experience campaigning. Like these were the guys yeah, exactly. who were previously like George Robert Glyde. He was fighting in Spain before. Yeah. All yeah. This. So like yeah, these guys knew what they veterans, were doing, yeah. especially yeah. with siege warfare. Like, you know, they, they mm -hmm. had done that stuff before a lot. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, without a freaking doubt. Uh, cool. This is so it's so much fun, Brandon, talking to you about this stuff. <laughs> um, any thoughts on the '70s film Cromwell? Have you seen that one? Mm hmm. Oh, I've seen it before. I watched it with some Patreon supporters of mine. Oh <laughs> my 
God, what? Like, the funny thing about that movie is that, like, the entire time you can tell, like, the movie directors wanted us to like Cromwell and think that he was, like, the American in the film. He was the rebel. Yeah. But, like, watching Who the believed in freedom thing, like, and democracy. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, this yeah. man is awful. Like, why? Yeah, I yeah, feel yeah. bad for the king. What? Like, oh, my yeah. God. And... No, I mean, flipping well, well, I will say, you know, I, I, I won't have any, I won't have any Charles the first sympathizing on my channel, Brandon. First, just, just, no, uh, I mean, hey, just, you know, just, hey, now, you know, I won't, uh, I his, won't his, his, his wife is a papist whore. Uh, let's be, uh, is, uh, yeah, yeah, awful. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's going to bring papistry to England. We can't have that. No, no, we cannot uh, first, have that. First thing. We cannot uh, have that. No, no, That's, but, uh, uh, no, I can, of course. Um, but, God uh, save but no. the constitutional monarch yes 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 william mm -hmm. the third uh i just think we can all agree uh yeah uh is, is our man uh but um uh, no but no i mean no you're right i mean well it is kind of like interesting i mean i mean i could just like if i were irish i would just be watching that movie like this <laughs> yeah you know what i mean like it's pretty like, much it's like there are very large chunks of the narrative here that we yeah. are not talking about yeah very exactly distinct. exactly I mean, yeah, that's just like, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, hey, I, I will, I, I will certainly, you know, I, I, I have a much more sort of favorable view uh, uh, toward Puritans than, 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 all, than most people these days. And, you know, obviously favorable being, you know, I don't root for them. I just like, you know, mm -hmm. I, I just sort of feel like I kind of get them a bit more. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's more and, 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 and I sort of don't write them off this sort of uh, quite as much as a lot of people do, but, um, yeah. uh, but uh uh, yeah, that said, Cromwell was just like, I mean, the dude was a fucking monster. Like, it's just like, yeah. it was just like, I, I just don't see how, you know, I mean, I, I just think he's kind of rightly kind of put in with the Stalins and the Maos oh, and the Hitlers. Although, and, you know what I mean? I it's just, say, a, it's just a yeah. gross dude. But the, um, the acting in it though, like, like the portrayal of the oh. king. Dude, Charles Alec Guinness was really amazing. Good. Oh my he's god, he's amazing like, in that movie. And like how when he was getting like angrier, you could hear like the Scottish accent kind of flare up a little, and the stutter, like and the stutter that was yeah. a really that was yeah. a really good like portrayal yeah. in certain ah, ways. Yeah. Just on oh, the whole, 100%. the film was so like oh no, like there yeah, were whenever... some elements that made you think that like they tried, but then they just yeah, go yeah, the yeah. exact opposite direction. Yeah, it was weird. Yeah, well, there was, uh, I mean, I, and I love the whole execution, like the trial and execution sequence and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that was, good. that was really good. I mean, yeah, and Alec Guinness, yeah, he just crushed, and he looks like him. He looks like Charles the First, you oh know, and God, um, really does. or looks, yeah. so they're both dead. But, um, uh, but yeah, and I love that how the stutter he would kind of get emotional, and the stutter would come out. It kind of reminded yeah. me of Joe Biden a little bit. You know what I mean? It's sort of <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, uh, I suppose so. you know a little bit. It sort of had that sort of uh, element where he's just kind of like trying to like keep it under control yeah, and, yeah like you know, sort suppressing of a, something internally as well yeah, as dealing yeah. with all the stuff on the outside yeah yeah and that's a great like uh sort of uh actory type of thing that that they tell you to do is sort of like uh especially when it comes to something like like crying it's like this famous like piece of acting advice where it's like if you're like if you have to like cry on screen don't try to cry try not to cry right like try to like mm. keep a hold of yourself and like feel yeah. the emotions but like try to like try to like yeah. you know because that's a bit more of a truthful that's thing, what right? people like, do yeah they try to do. they try to like yeah keep it like stiff up her lip and stuff like that so um mm -hmm. uh yeah 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 hmm. but uh all right, let's move on here uh, so uh i've heard johnny reb mentioned judah p benjamin who was he and explain it in the johnny reb voice please uh while judah p benjamin was the secretary of state of our great and glorious confederacy um and uh he's a he's a local <laughs> boy a uh, new orleanian um and uh and and uh, jewish and uh, so, hence why they, the Ark of the Covenant joke in the last checkmate, like Um But Dylan. yeah, he was. Uh, uh, say what? D Dylan over there. So, sorry, it's people. People being very generous. Oh wow! As uh, carry on. Um, well, so so yeah. So um, uh, uh, I have to uh, see if if it is if it's my buddy Dylan uh, too. But uh, in any case, so um, uh, so yeah. So uh, Judah P. Benjamin was a a yeah, just the Secretary of State of the Confederacy. Uh, and a very, you know, that's actually something that's, um, uh, yeah, I would, I would, I would, I would really love to make a video about him, uh, cause he was a very interesting guy. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's sort of interesting. I, I, uh, I, I don't want to get too into this, but I, I have, uh, I have seen a lot of whenever I'm on, on the internet and, you know, sometimes on the internet, you come across, uh, neo-Nazis doing their thing, uh, which is As generally, you, you know being really dumb and also trying to appropriate humor that is 
uh, aimed at them, laughing at them. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, in any case, so uh, it is interesting when when I see neo Nazis uh, talking like about how the Confederacy was so great, and uh, and oh my God, you know they fought to, for slavery, and slavery is so awesome, and and white mm -hmm. people are so great, and they always never seem to really bring up the fact that the Confederacy was famously tolerant toward Jewish people, uh, huh. which was not really the case <laughs> in Washington and in the North and in sort of the halls in yeah. sort of the federal government and, and the Union Army huh. and administration was a much more hostile environment toward Jewish people than the Confederacy was. That was kind of the one thing that they got right in terms of uh, uh, yeah, sort of, well, uh, uh, racial and ethnic issues. Uh, was, that's something was, that you uh, raised in that video, was it that, um, was it Grant or whatever, like expelled Jews from, yeah. his, from his camp? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, the yeah. funny thing is that I was about to bring that up as like, oh, an interesting point. And then everybody's, wait, I, you're the one who told me about this. It, it was in the video. Oh, yeah. I was in the fight. So <laughs> yeah, this yeah, is yeah. the same guy. But uh, No, and well, yeah, and, and Grant, and you know, and and it is like, uh, it's hard to, I mean, you know, I, I, uh, I mean, I'm not Jewish, so I don't really have, have a right to have an opinion. I mean, I do have a right to have an opinion on it. That's fucking stupid, but I don't like, I'm not, it, I am, it's not up to me to be offended by this, but I don't personally think that, um, that, that Grant was anti-Semitic. I just think that he made a really fucking boneheaded mistake. Yeah. Uh, cause, and, and, you know, and, and it's like his, cause that, that thing like that haunted him like the rest of his life. Right. And, and he like constantly was trying to make amends for it. And he seemed in his writings and in his statements seemed genuinely, um, uh, uh, you know, seem, seem genuinely like, like, uh, sorry for remorseful, it. And you know what I mean? Like yeah. he's just, you're remorseful. Exactly. Uh, so I think it was kind of a, a, uh, um, I was going to make a Joe Rogan comparison, but you know what? I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm not going to say something. All right. Moving on. But anyway. Uh, so, uh, moving on here. Next to Chris. Uh, I don't know if you guys are gamers, but what alt hits history games would you like to play? Like Wolfenstein, for example. Eh. Uh, you're kind of a gamer, but I've oh, never I'm played very Wolfenstein. Much a, I, am an, yeah. I am one of the elite epic gamers. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, <laughs> people who, uh, who who know me from my own live streams uh, know that, you know, while the whole history thing is a fun hobby, uh, really <laughs> it, it's it's actually my, um, my my pro gamer status that has cemented oh, yeah. my, um, my, my fame and adoration in the hearts of millions. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't really do alt history a lot of times. Mm. Like uh, more often than not, I feel like when it comes to historical settings, it's better to just do the real stuff because that's more interesting to me. Um, yeah, I, I think that games like Valiant Hearts or, I mean, heck, like even even Hearts of Iron and whatnot, like they stand to benefit the 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 gamer more when they're more accurate than not. Yeah. You know, when they can give like little. Uh, basically, my fa my favorite thing is when video games can evoke a time period and make you really feel like the logic of the time period, like on its own terms, if, if that yeah. makes sense. For, for example, the game War of Rights, uh, actually like it's a first person civil war shooter. And it isn't just like you get your gun, you run out and you fight. The mechanics of the game actually encourage you to fight in linear formations, which mm. I think is really cool because- yeah. And that's unusual kind of helps, for shooters too, because yeah. right, it yeah, helps yeah. The, the the player to understand why things are happening on the historical terms and not merely as like this um, uh, 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 quaint historical curiosity, like oh they were different back then and that's funny. It kind of appreciates the historical context a little bit better, so to say. Yeah, and I think yeah, that a lot absolutely. of yeah, I think that that's where video games can really shine because. At its core, it is an inter... I'm sorry, I'm going on a soapbox. But at oh, its core, yeah. it is an interactive form of media. You know, with a historical film, yeah. the most you can ever do is, is you, can, you can be watching it. You are seeing the things take place on the screen. The yeah. incredible value of a video game is that you are engaging with that content. You are taking part in the history. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's a great deal of opportunity and potential there. But there's also a great deal of danger there of minimizing how these things happen. You know, the number of times that I'll have people ask me questions about like, oh, like, but what if Napoleon just did this other thing at the battle? It's clear that they're pulling like strategic information, tactical, I should say, information out of like their experience playing Napoleon Total War. It's like, yeah. okay, but that game is nowhere near historically accurate. Yeah. So yeah, you yeah. can't like... It doesn't make you an expert in those. Well, sorts and of things. beyond Whereas, and beyond historical accuracy, it's also like 
like realism. You know what I mean? It's just like that's not how the real world works. Yeah. You know, and authenticity. That's kind of like, yeah. Historical yeah, yeah, yeah. authenticity well, alongside sure. accuracy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, authenticity, accuracy, but also just sort of the the um uh and this is very keenly on my mind because I'm I'm imminently, as you know, Brandon, imminently preparing to to shoot a feature film uh next month. But yes, uh, yeah. you know, just the logistical like the massive logistics of yeah for 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 you know me my co-director and my producer three people mm -hmm. you know me doing most of the work to be fair but i have you know i have two very hello and andy at 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 Tunche. um oh we're back hello. we're oh, back oh, all right we're back hi oh, hi there Woo. Woo. Uh, right. okay sorry everybody <laughs> sorry about that okay uh my connection might be a little uh, no it's it's coming back it's coming back uh sorry about that everybody Welcome so back. yeah so the massive so the massive um uh logistical like just achievement of just getting like 10 people uh yeah. across the country to one location to to do one thing is uh truly like like it is like turning me great like it is yeah, a it is a a, a, a a huge thing right and and just to like mm -hmm. oh god damn it okay all right we're back it's coming in now but you know anyway logistics are 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 fucking hard and there's no like rules right it's just sort of like it's all very inventive yeah. it's like okay we need to cross mm -hmm. this river how are we like, gonna there do are that, you know? there are situations facing you that you cannot possibly preempt so yeah to say. yeah and, um, and i that, mean like and, and, mechanics of a video game can never like replicate that necessarily yeah, and you know? <laughs> or i have yet to see yeah, I have yet yeah, to yeah see basically that. like like the scale i i think that like certain situations can be like you know like say the american war of independence you have some battles that are like a couple hundred guys on both sides but yeah. like the civil war like i'm sorry you're gonna make a video game about the civil war like yeah you could have the most powerful computers on the planet emulating like a half of a core maybe yeah you know, and, yeah, exactly. and even then, like, you know, something like the Total War games, you know, uh, like, okay, well, I want these 500 men to, like, start over here and go over there. You click on the entire unit and they all move as one. Like, no, those are all individual people. They have to, like, shout. You have to get yeah. those orders across. And I think that just that simple, like, scale of conflict is something that a lot of people don't understand. And I think that video games can actually harm that a fair degree. Yeah. Like, yeah, oh, well, like I, I why agree. didn't they just do this? Why didn't the Light Brigade just turn around? Because they're not able, you can't get the orders to them. Yeah. Like they're riding yeah. off on horses. The best way you can communicate with them is by sending a horse after them. Yeah, exactly. They're gone. You know. <laughs> yeah, precisely. And you know, and I'll be sort of in in uh, playing a total war game, and then you know, my my uh, troops will one unit will have been fighting for you know the whole battle, and they won't immediately do what I want them to do. I'll be like, ah! you know, yeah, it's like no, uh, yeah. how dare you? Turn yeah, around. yeah, how dare you? Exactly. Uh, so this is what you're saying, which uh, Dylan is very generous, and uh, I'm sure he's Venmoing me uh, as we speak. Uh, uh, what topic do we disagree on most? Please argue about mm. it for content. Republicanism um, is a plague. God save the queen. And, ooh, well, ooh, I, I, I live without religion, ooh. so I, suppose I, I should say long live the queen. Um, yeah, no, this whole like absolute representation thing is nonsense, and I don't like ooh, it. Ooh, ooh, yeah, that, you know, actually that is, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, uh, you're wrong. Uh, you are very wrong. Uh, Many people say uh, it is. Uh, you know, re representation uh, should be expanded to absolutely everyone in the most purely now. Uh, now, universal uh, enfranchisement to sense, be uh, sure, uh, oh, sure, uh, sure, but only within the elected house, which, to be sure as well, must have primacy, but not be the absolute. Uh, you know, no, no gods, no masters, Brandon. No gods, no masters. Uh, no I'm states. Into a libertarian uh, now. Uh, there were no no states. Uh, there we, we will only live. Uh, we will live off the land uh, as a common oh. treasury for all. Uh, with 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 uh, in in common in, in communes uh, with guns and uh, and 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 psychedelic mushrooms. Uh, and and oh boy. we will we will abolish cities. We'll just all have. Oh my. Um, <laughs> and and we'll, we'll all live in the woods and eat uh, and eat flowers and you know and 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 farm uh, and have sustenance farms and that's uh, okay. and 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 the the the, the 
the uh, the rotting skull of all of the kings and emperors oh. and uh, CEOs uh, will be will be uh, see oh, our, oh, will be our wine cups. them into all this now. <laughs> uh, they will be our there will be our, our cups of our micro brews that we will make in our um, uh, uh, in okay. our hipster communes. Uh, that's my vision what was for the first humanity. Rifled weapons ever issued to multiple regular British Army units. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Unless you're talking about, sorry, it's another question. Oh no, 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 no. sorry, yeah, yeah, no. Oh, this no, is actually no. a different person. I thought my, my bit person. had extinguished um, itself, so that's fine. Uh, I, I just, I just, thought, I, I'll just do this one really quick. Um, sure. uh, like if we're talking about like to some parts of the army, the Baker rifle, I think um, there were earlier rifled firearms, but they weren't really common. The Baker rifle is like the, the first one that was like standardly given out, um, but even then, they were only given to the rifles. Um, mm -hmm. Otherwise, I think it's like the P. 53 Enfield? Maybe something like that. Uh, here's a... Uh, a we'll, we'll get back to our quiz in just a moment, everybody. But uh, here's a here's a, uh, a question from uh, from from the, the, the wild, oh, frozen wilds of Scandinavia. We might, sorry, we might be lagging. I, I think we're lagging. Oh, no. A bit. Are, we, is, are, we, are they telling us we're lagging? It might be uh, my... They're telling us that we're lagging. Oh, no, no. God, okay. Um, oh, no. I'm sorry, everybody. I will... I... I we will try what we will. Yeah, I, I can probably. Okay, I, think back. I think we're back. Okay, here. Let me just. Uh, as long as we're like connected, I guess. I guess I'm happy. I. Yeah. Sorry about that earlier, guys, about the disconnection. But anyway, we've got a question from Frozen Norway. Um, I want to see more Leif Erikson or Norse content, like how they could have colonized the island of Newfoundland. What uh, would it have taken, and how would it have ch changed the course of history? So I. I don't think that Norse col Norse colonization, permanent Norse colonization, is in the cards. Uh, but I don't think, uh, yeah, I just don't think it's like, I, it's fun to think about it, but I don't think it's in the cards, right? I, I just don't think it like would have been practical. Um, it, they were just not that, not enough Greenlanders. Uh, the distances were too vast. And, and most importantly, there was just no reason to colonize these places, right? I mean, it, there just wasn't, um, like, uh, colonization happened later post Columbus, because there was a reason to do so, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because there was an economic uh, incentive, there was a a statist right incentive in terms of sort of like monarchs wanting to increase their personal power, yeah. and and they're just uh, and when we're talking about the Norse uh, exploration of North America, we're talking about a a village of um, Greenlanders uh, living on the frozen edge of the world under this led by this one guy, Leif Erikson, who's kind of their chieftain, kind of their leader, but has a very, but it's, it's a very sort of egalitarian thing. It's like very wild West. There just like, wasn't really any uh, need reason to do that. You know? Mm. Um, yeah. You might, you might say that like you require a great deal more than just a bunch of guys on a boat to actually launch a colony. You need certain yeah. state apparatuses. Yes, uh, exactly. Sorry, I'm exactly. Coming, I'm returning. Oh no, that's, that's totally cool. Um, Everybody, thank you so much for the super chat. Sorry about the technical difficulties. Um, and uh, and let's move on to the rest of the freaking quiz here, shall we, Brandon? Yes, um, all right. Okay, okay, all right. So, the crest on the Adrian helmet of World War I okay. is riveted on at how many individual points? Okay, so a few things. One, I think I can actually answer it, but also two, what a stupid question to ask. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> um, okay, the Adrian. I don't know what I was thinking. I really don't. <laughs> uh, let's I'm see. sorry. I'm sorry, everybody. I'm sorry. I want to say it's like, it's either like four or five or one. No, it's not one. More riveted. There are rivets. Is it is it four? I feel like that's too it obvious is, though. It is, it is okay. four. It is I gonna four. Say, like, I, I'm, I, I feel like I remember seeing like the one in front, two on the sides, one in back. But like, no, but that's too obvious. He wouldn't do that. that's too easy. Okay. Uh, well, you know, uh <laughs> I told you there'd be some softballs. Uh Brandon is catching up, everybody. We are All he's right. narrowing the gap. This is starting. Man, that was a while ago that I had that Adrian helmet. God, that was early days of YouTube. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Well, I Brandon's literally poison. I, I don't drink. I I, I sor sorted your videos by oldest because I wanted to find like old shit. Yeah. Oh god, there. Yeah, there's some. 
very obscure stuff there. Yeah. All right. The draft laws are never popular. And when the United States Ooh. introduced one to fight an increasingly costly civil war, there were infamously riots in New York. Um, there were many ways, of course, that an individual could avoid the draft, um, although not and, and not all of them were illegal. Um, of the approximately 170,000 men procured in the union's draft, roughly how many of them were substitutes? Did I do it? Did I get him? Did I, did I trick him? <laughs> Substitutes. Yeah. So as in, I took that to mean individuals who were sent in someone else's stead. Um, oh. People who like were paid off, you know, that kind of things. Interesting. Because there was that like, you could pay like $100 yes. or whatever and like someone yeah, else yeah, would yeah. go in your, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which the Confederacy had too. This, uh, is, this is the value of Wikipedia, my friends. <laughs> Uh, which the Confederacy had too, uh, but um, I, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't resist shitting on the Confederacy. Well, uh, some whataboutism while we're shitting on the Union, uh, and rightfully oh, so. Mr. Um, Mr. Terry says that the first question he puts on every test is the number of rivets on the Adrian helmet. I mean, truly, you know, there's no greater point to you know, make. For thank the you, Mr. War. Terry. Thank you. It's a great <laughs> question. Thank you. Uh, whatever. He got it right. Um, <laughs> uh, how many are substitutes? I'm going to guess of, of the 170,000. Yes, sir. 20,000. And that's my final answer. Oh, 120,000. Fuck. <laughs> that's, that's the reason why I use it is because that was like, wow, that's that. That's yeah. That's deal. insane. Like, that's nice. insane. I, I can like, yeah. if it was only 20,000, it might be a little bit more questionable. Like why is everyone so like, so up and I was like, if like the vast majority of this really was like people getting out of their yeah, 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 yeah. That, like, oh yeah, I can see why people would be upset to eat spaghetti about that. That makes sense. Yeah, oh, 100 percent Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah, generally I feel like drafts are, you know, quite upsetting things. Uh yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it, well, it was interesting. Um, and you know, and, and we don't have to to talk about this. Uh I don't, you know, necessarily want to talk about politics or anything, but I it was kind of interesting. I have had this conversation with friends like more than once the past couple mm -hmm. weeks with Ukraine and just being like, we're, you know, cause most of my friends are like in their early thirties and it's just like, we missed it. We missed it. We're too old for the draft. We're too <laughs> yeah. old. It's going to be good guys. It's going to be good. We're going to make it. Uh, yeah. yeah. Just for the world war three things, which to be fair, which to be clear, I don't think world war three is going to happen. I don't want, you know, no. to spread panic or, or, you know, misinformation or whatever. Uh, well, good. You, yeah, you, you, uh, you got me, Brandon. You got yeah. me. How does, how like, does I think the next does one is pretty tricky as well. All oh, right, all right. Well, we are. Um, uh, well, should we should we steam uh, ahead? Because I don't see any super chats. Uh, well, maybe. Oh, there have been uh, many I super do. chats. Have time. there? Oh God, I'm. I'm really sorry. Th oh my God, thank you so much for the Canadian uh, money. Actually, apparently, I, uh, I saw in the chat that uh, someone said it was very sad we missed an Emperor Tiger Star. I think it was super. Chat. Oh yeah, someone. Yeah, yeah, I saw him, but then we were like, we went on a roll about something. But yeah, yeah, Emperor Tiger it's, Star. It's if, difficult. If you're watching, you have I'm this a, many I'm a big people. fan. Yeah, and and everybody, I'm I am so sorry if I missed them. Uh, I, I I I I promise I have been like trying my best here. Um, it, it's it's uh, it's a difficult thing to do. Uh, medieval two, two total war is the best. I would agree with that. I think Rome one, yeah, I, I, I rate it a bit more, yeah. but yeah, I mean, it definitely has, I mean, there's, there's, you know, of course, and when you play a Scotland, everybody's got blue paint on. So, you know, uh, oh, well, actually one more, one more thing actually about video games. I meant to ask this, um, Brandon, mm -hmm. have you, uh, have you been, have you played much VR? A very little bit, although I have a lot I can say about it. Um, unfortunately, it tends to make me quite ill. Um, so oh, my, no, my brother, my younger brother, has a mm -hmm. VR system with his PlayStation. I've done a little bit there. And I, oh my, I love it so much, which is why it's so sad that it does yeah, make me ill. Yeah. But if I, I'll just say one thing before. Sure. You yeah, no, your please, point, please. Because I, it's, oh, yeah. it's, I, I really enjoy talking about this. I think that as far as the idea of there being interactability with history, is there's so much potential with VR in particular. And I realized this when I was in VR for the first time, like my uncle's house, I think. And we're playing a number of different games, you know, like spider Manning around like an island thing. And um, like one of the games was that you're a spy and it's like a like a, an escape room kind of thing. Oh, sorry, my camera's here now, not up there. Um, sorry, the old one ran out of battery, so I swapped. Um, you're like a spy and you have to escape different scenarios. And one of them is you're stuck in a car and there's gas that's being poured in. You have to like try and get out before. Yeah. So I'm just sort of exploring around, popping around different areas. I open up the glove compartment and there's a gun. 
I'm like, okay, well, that might be useful. I try to like shoot out the glass, but that doesn't work, whatever. So yeah, I set yeah. that down on my lap and I start messing with other things, but I'm running out of time. It's stressful. Mm. Everyone's like laughing, like, ah, it's chaos, you know, brain's yeah, 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 yeah. And in the madness, I pick up the gun and I shot myself with it. Holy shit. It, was, it was meant to be just a joke. Like, ah, yeah, I, can't yeah, yeah. Escape, I can't escape, whatever. Um, yeah. Not to make light, obviously, of a very serious thing, no, but you know, of course. In, yeah, yeah. in groups of friends, dynamics are different. Yeah, but I yeah. shot myself mm -hmm. and the screen went black. Wow. I, it actually so was an actual into the game mechanic that you wow. can kill yourself. Wow. And while it was like all, you know, a bit of a laugh at the time, like, I, like driving home, that I'm like, I started thinking about that. I'm like, whoa. Mm. For the first time, like in a video game, we have created a world in which the player doesn't press F. Doesn't yeah. doesn't hit space bar for Kevin Spacey to make them uncomfortable. <laughs> There's a world in which you take your own hand, you reach yeah. out, you pick up a firearm, you point it at yourself, and you pull the trigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like, crazy. It's that nice. is insane. And the opportunity that that provides to immerse individuals in his work. I think that that's scary and incredible, and I'm very interested to see where it goes in the future. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I I, uh, I agree. I couldn't agree more. I, I and the historical um, connection in, in particular, I think, is really interesting because I've I have uh, uh, I recently got a, a VR headset and um, and have been playing it a fair amount. I guess. Well, I I I don't I don't think he'd mind me talking about this. It's not anything really personal or anything, but. Um, yeah. When uh, when when Carl from InRange was uh, last in town in New Orleans, uh, he brought his VR headset and he was just like, "Hey, want to pilot a a World War One biplane oh, and like shoot at Germans?" So and cool. I was like, yeah. "Yes, you know." And it was Absolutely, like amazing. Yeah. And we were just like playing all afternoon and like taking turns or whatever. And um, and it was great. Uh, and and yeah. I was like, I need to get one. So I ordered oh, one yeah. and and it's sort of my Christmas present to myself. And so I've been playing it and. Um, uh, and it's been really cool. And yeah, I've, I like, I mean, there's certain, you know, there's like a star Wars game, you know, and I'm like, I was, I've, I've always been a big star Wars fan. There's like a star Wars game where you like have a red lightsaber and you're like, doo, 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 and you're like yeah. fighting droids yeah. and stuff. And it's just like, so fucking dope. And you're just like, it's, you're back to the playground again. But I do think historically, um, uh, like a couple of things have kind of come to mind. Um, uh, and yeah, there is, there is sort of that aspect that is like, oh, this is kind of scary. And sometimes you like, can't play it for too long. You've got to be like, oh shit, you know, oh God, you know, yeah, like, yeah. take a break. Um, but uh, yeah, so there's, uh, I have a couple, I guess, things to say about the historical aspect, but the first is that I, uh, um, is that I have been playing this game recently. It's a Medal of Honor game uh, cool. in VR and it's okay. It's not the best game I've ever played, but you use cool World War II guns to shoot a whole bunch of Nazis. So it's like very what satisfying. You need? <laughs> yeah, it's like very satisfying. But it is interesting like how much, and it is a very like immersive game. Um, mm -hmm. Or maybe I'm just like, you know, not super hip and, and just sort of am easily impressed by VR. But I, I find it very, to be very immersive and like, you know, you're like ducking behind you. Nah, we're you know, old and you're now. Ching, and you're, you know, you're like, yeah. you know, you're, 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 you're putting your, your clips into your M1 grand, and, you know, and it's like crazy and awesome. And, and, uh, and, and yes, yeah, very immersive and we are very old. Uh, but, uh, but I, I did think it was very interesting how the game was much more informed by like Hollywood and like World War II yeah. set action movies than yeah. by actual World War II history. Cause mm -hmm. like the, you know, like the D-Day mission and it's like so convoluted cause your character is in the OSS. So you can do cool, like, uh, saboteur type of shit. But yeah. also, like, they, they have this convoluted plot device that's just like, I want to be with my old unit in the invasion. And then, oh like, God. somebody's just yeah. like, come this way. Like, you're going to go against orders mm -hmm. to go with the paratroopers. And it's like, nah, it's yeah, it's, it's, it's always nonsense. Uh, so, and of course, so, and, and the game just, like, perfectly places you to be in, like, the coolest places and the most badass places, yeah. like, As of the entire just, Western Just front. make me, like, a generic soldier. Like, that's yeah, okay. Exactly. If that's what you want to yeah. do, then just... Do that, that, and like, I kind of would like to play yeah. a game like that, you know, instead of just being mm -hmm. like, oh, I just invaded Normandy and like cleared out a bunker. Uh, yeah. And now somebody's being like, like, you've got experience with armor, right? Pilot this stolen tiger. And like, yeah. don't mind if I do. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And it's just like awesome. Uh, it's like but, the Pearl uh, Harbor syndrome where like you're simultaneously at Pearl Harbor and the Battle of Britain. It's like, yeah, exactly, okay. Exactly. Uh, but, but yeah. And, and it is also interesting how like uh, every uh, German that you like come across and that you kill is just like 
the most comically evil Nazi in yeah. the whole world. You know, it's just like, you know, this Klaus going, nah, you know, yeah, mm -hmm. Hitler, yes, nah, you know, and just being like, ah, oh, she gets the Americans, schnell, mm -hmm. schnell, you know, he's, it's like an Indiana yeah. Jones villain. Like, it's like schnell and Schweinhund are the yeah, only words I, you I, 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 You know, it's just like, they're just so evil and they've all got like, you know, SS unit and they're just like all so evil. And, and, yeah. uh, and, and it's not like, you know, not just there, there isn't like a Czech conscript. Yeah. It's just like, please don't shoot me. I'm just a Czech. They just made me do this. You know, yeah. uh, it's just like always <laughs> the most evil Nazis imaginable, like straight out of time yeah. for the will. So you're like, okay, fuck this guy. <laughs> And you have like exactly. no feelings. And you don't have to think like, about it. You don't have to don't actually have any moral qualms, which you just blow like, his fucking brains out because he's in the I, fucking I, Nazi. I fuck him, the, you know? the best like historical things in general, like when it comes to war, like the best war media should make you feel at least a little disgusted. Afterwards. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I agree. Like at least yeah. a little bit. Like if nothing else, just for the gratuity of it. And I think that actually, yeah. not spoilers for hopefully future video content, but the Free Stone to Jones video, like I think that's something that they did really well is because yeah. they show like that that image of like the face just blown apart. And like, regardless yeah. of the ideology, regardless of who deserves it, who doesn't, who's the good guy, bad guy, like whatever, the like tragedy of war, yada, yada. Like, no, no, to hell with all that. It's yeah. just gross. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. viscerally, yeah. like, yeah, like it should be enough to make you ill. And I feel like the more cartoony you make it in that regard, the more dangerous, it's a, dangerous it kind of becomes. Yeah, um, yeah. I think that has there's, real, there's, real implications as well. But. And there's like a time and a place for it. You know what I mean? Like everybody, when you watch oh, Indiana course. Jones, it's like, you understand that it's just like, it, these it's, Nazis exactly are is, just here to like be yeah. canon, to be slaughtered. You know like, what I mean? I'm, and, I'm not going to watch like, um, like uh, Kung, Kung Fu. No, what was that movie where it was oh like my God, the, uh, <laughs> the Viking uh, Age and there were like dinosaurs with lasers or whatever. Yes. Um, uh, Kung Fury. That was it. Kung yeah, Fury. Kung Fury. Yeah. I'm not going to watch that and be like, this movie is making a mockery of the war. That's not how we were done. Oh, I am. I get no. Yeah, but yeah, like yeah, when yeah, it's exactly. a, when it's like, uh, like, a when it's a movie that has like a pretension at least of being a bit more real, like when it's not overtly yes. a parody, yes, you, there's a exactly. certain duty. There's a responsibility that comes with that to yeah, at I least, agree. To yeah. at least not have your audience members walk out of the movie with bad ideas of how the world works. For example, yeah. well, war can be fun sometimes. Fun. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, precisely. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, without yeah. a doubt. And it has like a, um, uh, yeah, without a doubt. And and it also, I feel like it not even in terms of like moral or social responsibility, it's also just a missed opportunity. Like just as it a is. filmmaker, if you're not going to portray, if you're going to portray war like an action movie, that's a fucking dumb way to portray war. Like, yeah, there's like at that point, just make the action movie. You, you want to make yeah. something different. Make something different. Yeah, and and it's just like there is such a more interesting way to portray the battlefield than just like yeah. action. You know, and and it's exactly. like yeah, if, if you want to make an action movie, just make an action movie. And the Patriot, I think, mm -hmm. like ha suffers from this quite a bit. In, in just that, like, it, it just like it, it's just. I mean, it's such a stupid movie, and I don't mean that like just like it's just dumb and and but it, like the perspective that it has is like of it a is. stupid person you know of just like someone who is just like doesn't know anything about the world and has no emotional yeah, making very poor decisions things that don't yeah. have any logical cohesion yeah um, yeah it's yeah. like when you just read it's like when you're just like reading a book by an idiot you know and it's just like and exactly so the, the way this person views the world is like not how the world actually works and it's just exactly. this like dumbed down simplified version of it and like and and yeah and it is like and it does kind of make these sort of heroes out of monsters and it makes like yeah heroism out of these atrocities and stuff like that uh and not mm -hmm. you know not i don't mean to use atrocities lightly i mean obviously it's like in terms of the uh, war of independence it was war yeah. right it's not a you know oh, like, yeah. but 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 it's still it's a fucking slaughter you know like a battle mm -hmm. any given battle is kind of an atrocity yeah. in its own way you know um uh, yeah, like I, but, I always uh, think that like the the best portrayal, like, oh, for example, like one of my favorite films. Um, and sorry, this may be a little out of left field, but I was talking to a, about it with a friend, like literally last night. Um, it's called Beasts of No Nation. Oh, which, that's a great uh, movie. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, for those who aren't aware. It's basically like a, it's a somewhat fictionalized account of a civil war in uh, a nondescript West African country, and because it's so nondescript, because there's not actually like. A, a real world like 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 it's it's fictional like the sides are fictional the nation is fictional 
and because all of that you because they don't they aren't like as constrained by like the historical like who are the good guys who are the bad guys type thing they're able to focus more in on the experiences of the individuals who are taking part in the events yeah. and i think even with outright historical narratives when you can really hone in on the experience to the point to where you can sympathize even with the most vile and terrible people that is the art that, that's the mark of a very good filmmaker and of a good piece yeah like yeah absolutely if you watch the film for example downfall and you have nothing but like hatred like yeah all these people deserve it they all went willingly and stuff, blah 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 it's like okay you're taking the perspective of literally goebbels in the film saying that the german people gave us this you know yeah, yeah, uh, yeah this yeah, mandate exactly, and exactly. like yeah. You can like that. That's one of my favorite films as well because like I can yeah. watch it and be like, yeah, these are all absolutely god awful people. But like, I kind of feel bad for Hitler in a, like in this instance. Oh, yeah. And there's a clip that's going to be taken. There's out. a clip. <laughs> but, <laughs> there's a clip. Uh, but, like, yeah, when, no, like as you see, yeah, imagine just like down. breaking yeah. down, having this emotional like like just yeah, yeah. There are certain ways that you can portray these historical events. Be like, wow. I mean, obviously, yeah. this is not okay, and what happened here is for the better in that particular mm -hmm. example. But I just feel yeah. awful. Like, I just feel miserable yeah. at the oh, end yeah, of yeah. all of this. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, well, it's absolutely, that's absolutely true. And Downfall is a great movie. And I, and I, and I, I, uh, I point to that, I feel like all the time for, um, uh, you know, when people ask me about like Civil War cinema. And, you know, mm -hmm. and it is a, you know, I, I, it's a, this is something I've, I've sometimes thought about making a video about, but I never will. Uh, just, just because I don't want to deal with it, but like the, uh, but just sort of the the Confederates and Nazi comparison, uh, yeah. which is which is sometimes used, uh, I think, very unfairly. Um, yeah. I don't think they are comparable really at all. Um, no, it's it's different uh, degrees that we're talking yes, about. it's different degrees we're talking about. Um, and and I, I don't think the the Nazis are really comparable to anybody. Then I don't want to get too in the weeds yeah. here, but not even necessarily the uh, communist totalitarian regimes of the 20th yeah, century. No, because I mean, I think the, that the given ideology and why they're doing things is very very different. It's very different. And and yeah. also if if the if the Nazis were given the longevity and the resources and the manpower that the communist totalitarians mm -hmm. were, they would have done far worse. Believe me, like yeah. everybody, which is impressive, to, in the which long. is impressive, which is very impressive. Yeah. Like it's not, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to engage in apology here. Don't get me wrong. Uh, yeah. And, uh, I, I, and uh, yeah, again, I've sort of, I've, I'm sure I've opened up a can of worms here, but it is like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it is true. Like if, if the Nazis had any, if the Nazis were around for like 70 years, uh, like a hundred million people would be dead. You know what I mean? Like it would be like yeah, more utterly, it would be just like the worst thing that had ever happened. And world war two yeah. was already the worst thing that ever happened. Yeah, um, exactly. Anyway, exactly. I, I don't want to, yeah, this yeah, is, this we're, is we're, we're getting on little tangents. Yeah, 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 this is, this is the whole thing, but um, media uh, is important. That's our yes. point. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, that is, that is our point. Uh, yeah. We yeah, have yeah, the next yeah. no, question. Uh... Oh, oh, real quick. Yes. I do have a next question, but mm -hmm. one more point about VR. So, yes, um, uh, I, I right. That's how I this all know. started. It is how this all started. We we're talking about <laughs> World War II and stuff. Uh, but uh, so, I, I one thing that I would love to do, but I don't have the technology or the know-how for it, is is um, I would uh, love to do like a tour of a city at a specific time in VR, like a yeah. YouTube video that mm -hmm. like that 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 is that can only be truly appreciated mm -hmm. with a VR headset. Or I'll, I'll one up it. Because that that absolutely yes, like imagine like flipping, like post Great Fire London, for example, Ooh. that'd be really cool. Yeah, if my girlfriend yeah, just gave yeah, me yeah. thumbs up. Um, yeah. But but there's actually an experience that I don't know if it's still a thing or if it was whatever. But the guy who does the uh, the hardcore history podcast, uh, Carlin. Yeah, the Dan Dan Carlin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Dan Carlin. Um, as I understand it, what what they did is they actually had like this little, like little mobile like truck thing or whatever that you put on a VR headset and it transports you to a trench back in the day. Mm. But not only do you have the VR headset, but you're walking through an environment that like, it's all like, you know, plaster cast and everything. Like it's not accurate because it doesn't have to be, you have the headset on, but like when you reach out and like you see the rat carcass and you like touch the rat carcass, there's like felt there. To where you oh. feel like oh. <laughs> and we are, and like, I feel like there's possibilities here with like a new kind. Imagine like, basically what I'm saying is give me enough, 
talent, time, and money. And I can go in some crazy directions, like the flipping, like those futurists of like early fascist Italy, where like you yeah, must yeah, eat yeah. the mushroom with your left hand and pet a piece of tortoise shell. It's like that yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of stuff <laughs> with historical environments, and like, oh my god, you can probably give people yeah. like severe mental trauma. And I yeah. said that was such yes. a big smile on my face. Yeah, I was like, yeah, <laughs> wouldn't that be great? Uh, no, I mean, I would love to do like, uh, I mean, you know, I I, I love uh, my city. And I love New Orleans and I would love to do like, and it wouldn't be that big of a, of a, of a project too. Cause if you did like colonial New Orleans, we're only talking about like, yeah, like small like, areas, like a small area. It's like, it's like 10 square blocks. You know what I mean? And like, yeah. And, and just to like, like kind of a Google map street view type of situation, but in VR, like mm -hmm. New Orleans in 1740, like New Orleans in, in, in 1780, yeah, yeah. you know, and just sort of, and you're just kind of walking through the streets of the French quarter as it yeah, was just like, ex like experiential type things rather than, yeah. I think there's a lot of opportunity there is, is having yeah. an experience as opposed to playing the game. Um, yeah, precisely, some, precisely. Like, interactability type thing. Yeah. yeah. And it would just be kind of a tour and you could like, you know, click on something and then, you know, my voice would pop up or somebody, you know, I would just be like, this yeah. is the, well, no, you're, you're or, you know what I mean? Small, like, you're thinking too small. On. You press the button and all of a sudden you appear right behind them and say, well, yeah, hey, let me tell you about. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Exactly. Uh, yeah. No, but not me. Uh, Tom Hanks uh, or, you know, oh, okay, okay. celebrity superstars. We got to go big with this, Brandon. <laughs> all right. So should we, uh, should we continue with our quiz? Um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So this was, I, I got this one from a very old video of yours. You didn't actually talk okay. about this, but I know that you have been to uh, one, at least one or a couple reenactments of this battle and that at least you used to be pretty interested in it. Um, Still am. Bishop, Bishop Odo de Bayou fought at the Battle of Hastings with which oh. weapon? Oh god! Oh, by you. Um, no. Okay, the name sounds Bishop. vaguely familiar. Here's at the Battle of Hastings. It, bishop okay, Odo. so I have no idea. Oh, oh, a bishop. You said like an actual was bishop. bishop. That wasn't his name. He was a bishop. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was a bishop of the church. Oh, okay. He fought with an unusual weapon. What was it? Unusual weapon. Now I would think just because of the role, a mace, but that doesn't strike me as unusual. So you, you're kind of close. I'm kind of close. It is a. You're kind of close, but but it, it it's more unusual than that. I don't want to look at the chat. And um, and it no, has yeah, to do and it has to do with his religious role. Is it one of those like giant crucifix things that they would carry before altars and whatnot? No. That that would be badass, but no. That would be, but no, it's not specific. I, I I'm not going to ask you for the point because I'll say that was my final answer. But I'm trying to think about. Hmm? No, you could. I mean, I, no, I feel well, like you have the amazing this time. Oh. Um, I'm I'm getting told scepter of some sort, but that that would be a kind of mace as well, is what I would think. So um, he he, I'll give you a hint. He did not okay. want to shed blood. Did not want to. Well, yeah, that that's and that's where I know like the mace thing uh, comes from, like the you know the because it's a blunt force thing, uh, not a mace. A club wouldn't be cool or interesting at all. Um, No, I'm afraid I'm not getting anything. It's a, a giant Bible. He just had a massive Bible, <laughs> and he's just smacking people over the head with it. Uh, is that your final answer? Yeah, it may as well be the final answer. You had it there for a second. It was a club. Oh. Well, but... but, but... <laughs> okay. I you were doing this. Yeah, no, I, I know. <laughs> <You're giving me> <laughs> the... <laughs> I figured uh, that would be like, I don't know, Mace, like, okay. A club. Yeah, no, it was a club. Yeah, it was right, a club. Whatever. He did not yeah, want to good. shed blood, so he so he fought with the club. I'll be I'll, uh, I'm going to be salty about that one, but okay. Oh yeah, it's okay. That's all right. I mean, you know, you did. All right. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, all right. Get, hit me, hit me, hit me. All right. So so this one was new information. Was very interesting to me, mm -hmm. and it's a little it's very it's very obscure, but it does connect to New Orleans. So I thought okay. maybe you know I, I think I figured it'd be a fair one for you. Okay. Um, what was the mid 18th century treaty which ceded Louisiana and New Orleans with it uh, from France to Spain? Treaty of Paris, baby, made in secret. Now, Woo! nope. Now, is that you're going to be your final answer? Because that's not oh, it. No. There's treaty. something that came before the Treaty of Paris. And this is what Ogden was really interesting to me and blew my mind. That's it. Yep. Ah! Yeah, that's it. 
Hitler. Uh, very good. Hell yeah. Very good. Hell yeah, yeah. It was in 1762. That was the one in secret that then they unveiled with, with the, the Treaty, Treaty of Paris, Paris to be like, 63. yeah, so like, we're going to surrender all this land to you, but like, we don't even own half of it anymore. So you'll have to talk to the Spanish. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, nice. Here we go. All right. One more point for Andy. Hey, well, uh, I'm starting to really regret as well my next question because it's uh it's a soft. Although maybe I'm not actually because it's completely unfair and throw away, and I just thought it'd be fun because I couldn't think of anything else that was better. But carrying okay. on. Well, should we? Because we are we have hit two hours. Should we? Should we just carry right on for to the next? I'm question okay with carrying on. Yeah, we're uh, yeah, we're yeah, yeah. and and, and we can still. I mean, I'm having a great time. I'm having a great time. Yeah, but, yeah this uh, is good. You know, um, okay. Oh hey. So sorry, another person I recognize is in the chat there. Oh great, Love. that's great. Uh, um, okay. Here's my question for Brandon. My next one. Government forces at Culloden were said to do what with their bayonets oh. to, to counter the Highland charge of the Jacobins? All right, so the traditional, like, drill back in the day is, like, a really wonky, like, you have the, the musket held back, like, in this sort of position, and your, like, right hand's going to be behind on the butt, and the pretty natural thing to do right there is just go, whoop, is you know to stab right on forward, but because of the ferocity of the Highland Charge and how many times they had broken through, the British are attempting to get a little bit more cohesion and of an, like an actual drill, which wasn't really common in the 18th century. We don't see a lot of like actual bayonet like uh, uh, fencing taking place until like after the Napoleonic Wars. So this is a bit of a bit, bit weird, bit different. But what they did was rather than just thrusting forward, they were actually explicitly intended to whoop, veer off to the side, to the right, attack the man who's getting at your colleague, because when the Highlander theoretically is going to lift up his, you know, his broadsword, he's exposing himself. Or if he's holding up his shield, he's exposing himself down there. So you can thrust right in like underneath the ribs in a way. Sorry, I'm giving you more detail. I'm kind of flexing because it's like finally something that I know. <laughs> you're going to get underneath that sword swing. Well, meanwhile, then, yeah, there's going to be a Highlander in front of you, but your buddy right next to you is going to get him, is the entire idea. That was a softball. That was yeah, a was. softball. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Brandon. Another point for all Brandon. Right. So um, uh, this, all right, I'll yeah, yeah. else. This, this one's kind of a cheat, but. Um, okay. Who's the cutest history YouTuber? Brandon F, baby. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, actual. I'm sorry, Andy. The answer was Griffin Johnson, armchair historian. Oh, he's he's <laughs> only 80% as cute as you are. Is it true that he's like, I mean, you're friends with him. Is he yeah. like, isn't he like 12 years old or something? He's like absurdly young. <laughs> Uh, he's a few years younger than me. I think he's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Early twenties, I think something like that. Yeah, yeah but, that's uh, insane. That's did, insane. I mean, you know, hey, props. Like, I, I don't well. know him personally, but like, it's props that he like got big at you know at 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 in the womb and yeah. is like and hasn't made a mess of his life yet. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, well, I guess I didn't sure. get that. Uh, I guess I didn't <laughs> no, get well, that. I mean, uh, we can. You know, we, we can. How, how about a half a point? I'm, half I'm point? losing anyways. Yeah, we'll give you a half a point because I, I'm kind of cheating with that one. Perfect. All right. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Uh, so yeah, one point. Then I already had. I'm adding my half to to that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, well, great, Taylor. Let's uh, let's create some uh, some super chats here for one second. Uh, me. Hi, what Chris. is the best show sent in the Renaissance, in your opinion? Also, have you seen the Canal Plus scene? Borgia, Faith and Beale. Canal Plus. What the hell is that? Um, best show set in the renaissance you know actually um th that you met now that you mentioned the borgias uh there was a not half bad show that i don't think anybody watched and i think it only lasted a couple seasons called the borgias with uh jeremy irons which was very much kind of like a sort of rome uh type of show you know like like hbo rome it was like yeah sort of pre-game of thrones sleazy historical really sexy violence intrigue type of show yeah. uh, it was not hate that kind of media with a passion honestly oh really i, I despise uh, I mean, it yeah. well so uh, have you uh I, i'm i'm guessing because i haven't seen a video on it you haven't you haven't seen it but uh, no. uh have you seen outlander no i have not although i have heard many things and all of it is trash uh, I, you know, I, I think it's, I think it's kind of fun. Uh, I think it's kind of fun. It's a bodice ripper for sure. Uh, it's a bodice ripper, yes. It's a bodice ripper for sure. <laughs> I think it's kind of fun. Uh, I think the, like the performances, 
uh, are are quite good. And like, yeah, it's like well cast and like mm -hmm. and like the technical aspects are quite good. Uh, the writing is like quite sleazy and like very yeah. focused on like we need to see this hot guy's butt. Uh, yeah, so, and, so the thing about and, HBO, and historically it is it is a bit of a mess. Yeah, the thing about HBO and honestly that entire genre of like just of edgy media in general, it strikes well, me stars, very much. I think I think, I think uh, uh, Outlander is stars, but fair enough, it is okay, very much. But, but like that genre, you know, like those sorts of people, like Game of Thrones sure and all the rest. Yeah, it yeah. really always honestly just strikes me as the writers are like like they're a bunch of middle schoolers. They realize that if they write into the script and then she takes her top off, she oh my. Guys, do you think she'll actually she'll actually do it? Oh my god! Yeah, and, they, yeah, yeah. and they chuckle, and then they add it into the script because there are so many. See, flipping, watching yeah. HBO's Rome with a friend of mine back in the day. Yeah, we didn't really know what we we're what to expect going into it, and I remember at one point we were in like high school at the time. He had to get up, go and open up his door, and shout out to his mother, "We ain't watching porn," and keep the door open because it was kind of weak. Because otherwise, it's just panting and moaning in the other side. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. What yeah, are they yeah. doing in there? It's like, oh. well, I will, I will say, I think Rome. I, I am a huge Rome fan. It's, it's one of my favorite TV shows of all time. I do I think like that like elements of it. I, I think like I, historically, it is, it is quite strong. Uh, it is quite strong, and it does. Yeah. And I think like a lot of the sex in Rome is like called for and justified. I think it's like, not all of it, yeah. like there's there, not all of it, but, 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 um, uh, but a lot of it is, is sort of, I think there for a reason, but I do think mm. there's like, there's like a distinct difference. And like, listen, like I, I think that, I think sleaze is something that should come back to, uh, I, I think, I think the past 10 years or so I've seen a distinct lack of sleaze in our in our TV shows, uh, even later mm. Game of Thrones did not have the same sleaze that early Game of Thrones had. Right, <laughs> early Game of Thrones was just like dicks hanging out and boobs everywhere. Yeah, and yeah. like it was gratuitous, but I kind of would rather have that kind of like, granted in like a sex positive way, uh, not in an mm. objectifying way, but in sort of a, a sex positive way. Uh, I just. You're so the, the, earlier uh, of, the earlier question of the earlier question of something that we can disagree about. I think that we found this uh, because uh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Again, I I I will agree you know, that I think that there is a place for it. I think it makes yeah. sense in certain settings. Yeah. So, like in principle, I don't necessarily disagree with you, but I think that your standard of what is appropriate is a lot different than than my standard, so to say. Yes, for sure. I mean, I think uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, and and I do think I think there's like there is a classy way to do it. There's an artistic way to do it that yeah. that isn't gratuitous or exploitative you know what i mean and and um yeah yeah exactly. uh and and i think i mean it's the, the point is it's like gotta have a point right and and like with violence yeah. right it's the same kind of thing is that like and yeah and there has to be a narrative function. it has to be called for yeah. yeah and and uh otherwise it just comes across as as just uh, mm. uh as just kind of creepy and a little yeah, like i like i feel like for example barry linden did it quite well because there aren't very many scenes with nudity but when yeah. it's there it's a very sharp like I'm not used totally. to seeing that in like this kind of environment. Like it's it's weird, it's jarring, I mean, it's, and it's discomfort. yeah, it's artistic. It it's like it's like yeah. a, it's I mean like so much of that moving. It's like a painting, you know. It's it's like a yeah. nude painting. Um, exactly. uh, no, for sure. I mean, well, I do. Yeah, I mean, I I, I generally kind of like like that stuff because I do think it's you know, and and I do think that it is a that a Americans do have a fairly unhealthy relationship with sex, and and I and I kind of I guess I appreciate it seeing in our media mm -hmm. more because it is sort of like a, it is like, why is it okay for John Wick to, and this has been said a thousand times, but I do think there's some truth to it. Why is it okay yeah. for John like Wick the gratuitous to, violence being to murder a, a thousand people yeah. and, and we cheer it on, but you know, somebody yeah. shows their butt and all of a sudden it's the end of the world. I think I just kind of go in the opposite direction and I just say, it shouldn't, that shouldn't be like, neither of them should be there. You know, it's like, yeah. So I don't know. I, so I, I, I don't, uh, uh, I, so I, I think, I think give Outlander a try, give it a try. If only to just yell at the screen, um, okay. you know, give it a shot, give it a shot. Oh, there will be much uh, screaming. There will be much screaming. Um, no but, uh, but yeah, the, the sort of Outlander really like the first two seasons are like entertaining and, and they work after that, it falls apart. Uh, mm. season three and four, it, like, and it's based on books, but like, and the books can do the I, thing, so the show does I thing. hate that excuse so much. Like, oh, you I can't know. expect them to get this detail about the Battle of Gettysburg, right? Because it's actually yeah, about the, the book, book, not about the battle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gee, I wonder what the book is about. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, and it's, and, it's, and it's a bad excuse. And also, it's just like, uh, I don't know. I think that if the like books aren't necessarily like great, 
You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. like if the book is just like if the what the books do doesn't work, then maybe as an ad- you when you're adapting, maybe you should just not do that. I don't know. Yeah, uh, just make your own story. I take, I take. All right, uh, should we move mm-hmm. on? Let's let's. Uh, let's All right. Let's yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's move on here. So, um, uh, okay. What are we What are we doing here? So, uh, okay. Here's here's another one for you. Uh, is, this is a geography uh, question okay. because I know and 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 this actually I didn't get from your from your videos. I remember watching a live stream, a gaming live stream that you did with with that Assassin's Creed uh, uh, game that takes place in London and you were like nerding out about the geography. So this is a London geography question. All right. Okay. I lived there for a year and a half, two years. So maybe. Okay. So the Adelphi Theater, very famous Victorian era theater. Okay. Is just three blocks down Strand Street from which iconic West London landmark. Not a clue, but if it's an iconic West London landmark on the Strand, uh, I mean, the first one that, wait, is it even on the Strand? I don't even know if it's on the Strand or not. Yeah, I'm afraid I have no idea about this one either. Is it uh, Trafalgar Square and the Nelson Column? Yes, it is. Good All job, right, I was Brandon. Say, because like, I, I was say, like, I think that's on, I'm pretty sure that connects to Strand and it's the West London uh, it is. Thing, so. okay. You did it. I did, did it. it. I did it. You didn't overthink it. That's what I was like. He's going to overthink this. Well, and yeah. He's going to like, and he's going well, like, to be like, the statue of, uh, of Thomas yeah. Moore. I thought, you know, exactly. it's like, the most obscure <laughs> thing right mm-hmm. behind Downing Street. Uh, and, but no, yeah. no. Uh, all right. So you're just a half a point behind, it looks like, Brandon. Well, no, nope, you're catching um, the fuck up. One and a half. No. Or, oh, no, 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 you're half. right. You're right. You're half. Mathematics. I'm a historian. I don't do numbers. All right, all right. Uh, um, point on. This is this. All right, is, so crazy. Crazy. Uh, here we are. So, all right, uh, right this one me. connects to um, one of uh, like one of the the first videos that I saw of yours that I really enjoyed. Um, in the lead up to the Civil War, the burden of taxation was geographically speaking hardly equitable, with the vast vast majority of federal tariff revenues coming from a single port. What was that port, and what rough portion? rough portion of tariff revenues was it sending to the federal government and bonus points if you can tell me the second and third highest as well we don't have to take the bonus points thing like literally maybe if we don't because you're you're doing really well here i just i was trying to have fun with it all right anyways brandon i'd be happy Mm -hmm. to answer that question the answer is 63 percent of the federal government's uh, tariff revenue was coming from the port of new york and, yes, sir. Uh, number two was Boston. Number three was New Orleans. Boom. Yep. There you go. Boom. <laughs> Very good on you for the actual percentage. Boom. I was just going to accept approximately two thirds. You know that honestly, it was just uh, literally the only reason that I remember that is because I was saw that video ten thousand times when I was editing it. And that's, I mean, that's like, fair enough. Then. That's <laughs> actually <laughs> fair enough. Yeah. That's the only reason that I remember that. Um, but yeah, so it's interesting. I, I you know, and I talked about this. I've been doing. Uh, uh, comment audio commentaries of all the Checkmate Lincolnites episodes on my Patreon, mm-hmm. uh, which you know uh, those watching uh, should join um, if you can. Um, there you go uh, to support uh, to support you know fun stuff. And we've been and I've been doing the audio commentary and and one thing I, I brought up in the in the 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 audio commentary of of episode three, uh, the tariffs episode was uh, was some of the criticism that I had from that episode, which was not bad which like shockingly Mm. and like and and blessedly was like good well-informed historical criticism uh that i got online for that uh because you know normally especially like you know i mean the vast majority of criticism that i get constructive and non-constructive is about civil war stuff uh for some reason most people don't for some people don't don't get as worked up about you know uh yeah yeah about about you know, the, the history of Sudbury, Massachusetts from 1630 to 1653. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, but uh, as they do about the Civil War. But um, and, and most of it is is demagoguery and partisan hackery uh, is just, yeah. you know, I don't like what side I perceive you to be on uh, in, our, mm-hmm. in our current politics. Oh, um, God. The number of videos that I have that like kind of jump all over the place and like People will accuse me of being a Nazi. They'll accuse me of being a communist. A communist, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I've had, like, I've had Brits, like, like older, like, boomer Brits, talk yeah, to yeah. how I am just demeaning Brexit the folks. activities of the British Empire, and I'm not giving them enough credit. Oh, like, God. 
I'm sorry. Have you seen my channel? Have you yeah, said exactly. anything about what I do? Like, <laughs> yeah. And no, like, are you kidding? like, and yeah, and like the number of like, oh, soy boy, lib cuck, you know, uh, oh let's God. go, Brandon type comments that I got on my uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. my um, uh, and I write video. It's like, oh God, I yeah. literally say that I'm a one nation conservative in that video, like not an yeah. American style one, but like. What do you, what more do you want from me? Yeah, like, yeah. Well, and it's also it's like your patriot video about uh, the racism. It was just like I mean, yeah. and it's also like like because I I can say this I feel like because I because I know you like fairly well. I mean, we're like friends. We're not like you know we don't yeah. know each other super well, but we're like friends. And it's just like and and when you're like this movie's fucking racist, like that's not like that like coming from you, that's not like. Yeah, well, like and that's like you're not I try to get that across at the very start. Yeah, you yeah, do. Like, yeah, you're, you're not the sort of person who like throws that around. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. yeah, you're not the sort of person who throws that around. I would not. I would not call you a an SJW. Uh, no, exactly. Uh, exactly. Uh, so you know, it's not like, and you know, I don't want to. Yeah, I'm not trying to. You know, you're not. Obviously, you're 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 very. You know, you're you're. <laughs> You're an empathetic guy and you're not you're like, fine. you're not, yes. you don't have like a, you know, it's not like you're heartless when it comes to these issues, but you're uh, definitely yeah. not like an activist. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, I, uh, I'm just, I'm not as like in tune or, or yes. invested in those conversations. Yeah. In you're, you're it's an 80 year old man from, from, from 1914 uh, stuck in yeah, the body exactly. of a 25 year old in, in 2022. Uh, exactly. So, uh, but, um, uh, but anyway, yeah. So uh, what were we, what were we yeah. Anyway, so the check me like a nice thing, right? So it was it very interesting. So mostly it's just like, you know, oh, you're a lib, whatever, you're a commie. But yeah. this, uh, the, the, the criticism was really good. So basically, um, and I, and, and I, but I have a, a counter for it. But basically um, there was a Reddit post, forum post that I guess kind of went a little viral or like, or that sort of gained mm -hmm. a lot of traction about that video that basically sort of said, um, uh, so, Optimus Shea Films in this video, he misunderstood how tariffs played into the war. And, and mm -hmm. uh, basically what he didn't touch upon was how these tariffs, yes, tariffs, like the, the money that the federal government used was coming directly, the revenue was coming directly from the merchants of New York, Boston, and New Orleans. But, um, but what he failed to appreciate was how those merchants then passed it on, the cost on to the consumers, mm -hmm. right? Which definitely okay. happened, which is like a great Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Which is like they would, if they got charged by the government a certain amount, they would charge more when they yeah, sold to those make up goods the expense to yeah. make up the expense, and that is like a great point. Uh, however, mm. there is a, there is a I, I have a a, a a counter to that, which is that um, uh, when you actually look at a lot of these documents that I was talking about in that video, mm -hmm. the most um, uh, the 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 items uh, or the products that uh, generated the most uh, revenue tariff or tariff revenue for the federal government, where uh, mm. I believe it was um, fur, wool, and molasses. So now, stuff is happening up north, not down south. Yeah. It's like, who is more likely to wear a fur coat? Uh, yeah. Somebody in Boston or somebody in Charleston? You know what I mean? And so like, yeah, it is... Yeah. It, it, sort of whichever kind of way you slice it that that's like an amazing point and you know to be fair like i should have brought that up like that is definitely like an oversight on my part yeah I well i mean it, it's it's a valid point to be sure but it's, you know, a great it's point, also yeah. limited time on the video so yeah you know future content yeah, sure, is the sort sure. of thing that can be touched no on. for sure i mean but you know i i it, that was kind of back in the day when check me like a night's episodes were 10 minutes long and not you know uh yeah. <laughs> multi-part epics you know uh, they're they're sort of all yep. getting like 30 40 minutes now so um uh yep. But but yeah so but yeah I thought that it was a really interesting point but yeah and and it's and wool too I mean wool was very fairly ubiquitous but like if you're a wool merchant like where are you gonna go to like you know make the most money yeah it's like it's exactly, not exactly. Uh, yeah yeah so it's interesting it's interesting uh, yeah. let's uh, okay we got a couple of super chats here um, thanks for the ten bucks dude what was the official salute oh. of the U.S. Army and C.S. Army in the Civil War like uh, it was. Uh, this is not my area of expertise um, in terms of just like sort of rules and regulations of the army. However, I am like 85% sure that it was sort of the, it was this. Oh, hold uh, on. That it was not, here. that it was not this. It was, it was this. Hmm. Um, so it was kind of the more sort of Britishy, old timey, you know, that. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but I feel like that is a more kind of reenactory sort of question. So I mean, do you I, know? 
Brandon? So I don't know about the American Civil War, but more broadly speaking, I know that the idea of saluting as a formalized, like it's the same thing regulated by the actual military um, mm -hmm. is more of a Victorian, even like early 20th century. Like it's, it's a later development, at least from what I'm used to dealing with. Yeah. Uh, because in the 18th century, for example, there's a lot of different treatises and a lot of different ideas on how you salute. Uh, Cuthbertson, for example, uh, says that when you are, when an enlisted man is passing by an officer, he is not, he is meant to um, not necessarily stop. He's meant to carry on the way he's going, depending mm -hmm. on what he's doing. But what I thought was interesting, he's meant to look the officer square in the, square in the eyes. You're not meant to like stay looking forward. You're supposed to yeah. meet their gaze and keep it as long as you can, as you go. And if you're passing them on, on like you're on their right, then you salute, yes, with your right hand. And that's where you have, you know, if you have a cap, mm. like a bearskin cap, then you have your hand reached up. If you have a cocked hat, then you take it off and hold it down flat mm. by your side, not like yeah, flourishing it okay. out, but flat by yeah, your yeah. side while you maintain eye contact. But interestingly, if you're passing the officer on the other side, so if, if you're on his left, you do not swoop up with your hand or reach your hat down. You actually do it with the left. And there mm. are a couple of historical documents where we see officer or, or, or enlisted men and NCOs, whatever, saluting officers with their left hand, yeah. which nowadays is like, like, I'm sorry, that looks horribly wrong. It's like really yes. weird to do. Mm -hmm. But the entire idea was that it's whatever is furthest from the officer. Um, totally. Different regiments and whatnot probably have different traditions and different styles. Um a lot of this stuff isn't really codified and formalized until later years. So it's mm. entirely possible when it comes to the American Civil War, some guys are just going, you know, you know, sir, and other people are taking off their hat. Other people are lowering it down. Maybe people doing this, some people doing this, some people doing this, some people doing, you know, maybe even if there's, if there's a, what is it? If, if there's a, um, if there's a poll, it's something like this or. Oh yeah. Yeah. Just sort of the. Oh yeah. It, it's one of these, I think is, you know, the Polish thing. So yeah, I mean, uh, that would be my guess based on earlier time periods that I'm familiar mm -hmm. with. There's probably a lot of different things going on. Um, yeah. And some people probably cared a heck of a lot more than others. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. I mean, yeah, especially when you look at some of the like, uh, uh, especially in the Civil War and, and, and out West after the war, you look at some of the irregular like militias yeah. and irregular paramilitaries and stuff and just sort of the the um uh like they'll appoint anybody general you know what i mean it's just like yeah, exactly. all right you're the general now you know right. it's just like all right yep, sure. you're goddamn right i am give me that hat yep. you know and it's just like it's just like <laughs> yeah 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 it's the things were yeah. definitely a little more loosey-goosey uh, there's probably sure. some guys going like this with their salute you know it's just yeah <laughs> Uh, this is a good question. I think you two are facing each other on deadliest warrior, not knowing who the other chooses. What pre 1700 soldier slash warrior are you picking? Well, pre 1700, I mean, that's pre 17. Yeah. That's I feel like, like that's, that's not, that's not fair to Brandon, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's giving, uh, yeah, it's giving both of us a little bit of a handicap, I think. Um, yeah, yeah. pre 1700. Can I do like a French cuirassier? Those guys that have like the full plate armor with the pistols and yeah. I'm sorry. I'm supposed to say without knowing who you choose, but yeah, something I mean, you like know, that. There's no way to do that in the live stream. Uh, oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, pre, I mean, obviously, you know, we'd we'd want to be like as close to 1700 as possible in order to just like have a technological. Yeah, advantage. exactly. Uh, you're not gonna you're not gonna say like I want to yeah. pick a Spartan. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, exactly. little yeah, Timmy, yeah, go back yeah. to eighth grade, please. Uh, yeah, I want a uh, a a a warrior a from from Jericho. 9,000 years ago, uh, in the Neolithic. <laughs> I want a Neolithic warrior yeah. worshiping you know, a giant club. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. So I would probably say, uh, you know, hey, I, I would, is this not knowing who, what pre soldier warrior? All right. Uh, pre 1700, I am going to pick uh, Pierre Lemoyne, the Sieur de Iberville. Uh, the biggest oh, badass okay. in French Canadian history, uh, who, uh, who shat all over the English on multiple occasions in King William's war, crippling the, uh, fishing trade of, of all of England with his raids on Newfoundland, um, and, and also decimating the English fur trade, uh, with his overland attack, which took three months for them to get up there from Quebec on, uh, the, uh, Hudson Bay, 
uh, uh, trading posts of the English. So, you know, and, and that's actually something that maybe, I mean, you know, we should, we should get through our questions and wrap things up soon because we haven't going for a while, but that's also uh, something that, that I know that like, we could both like, you know, uh, I mean, maybe, 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 a, maybe, a, maybe a video at some point, but about just sort of the, um, uh, about economic warfare and just sort of like, oh, because yeah. I feel like the best, and, and often I think about this, uh, with, um, uh, how, how it sort of warfare historically relates to like almost like modern day activism is that like the mm -hmm. most effective like warfare is, is sort of an economic disruption. Yeah. And I think, yeah. And, sure. and, and, and I love like, and this guy, Iberville, who, uh, you know, founded Louisiana, who has a, a street named after him, uh, uh, Iberville, uh, uh, street, which is runs is real close to canal in the French quarter. Um, he was a master of that. Like, like he didn't, it, it like, all of his, like, he was not like flashy tactical guy of like, you know, and I brilliantly flanked them, you know, none yeah. of that shit. He was just like, okay, when he was fighting against England, he was like, okay, so like, how can I hurt their wallet? Yeah. And, and then, and that's what he did. And it wasn't like a traditional military campaign. It was just like, I am going to like make them bleed. So he basically yeah. went to Newfoundland and, you know, fishing in Newfoundland in the colonial era was huge, right? It was like, it was a big business. It was like how England mm. ate fish, right? It was like, it was fishermen from Bristol. Yeah. They went and they set up camps in on Newfoundland huh. and like fished in the Grand Banks and like shipped that fish back to England. And that was like how England fished or how like, you know, in the big markets and stuff, obviously, if you're like mm -hmm. living on the coast, then you're just going to like, you know, plop your line in. But uh, but Iberville went and he burned all those settlements down and he captured everybody and like held them for ransom. And and the English economy took a huge hit. And it's like, that's what it's all about. You know what I mean? It's like yeah, if you really yeah, want to yeah, hurt exactly. your enemy. And, hmm. and, you know, and you see like with, uh, with like activists too, I think about this too, like activists who like chain themselves to like in the road yeah, and like, just like in all sorts of different forms and for all sorts of different causes, yeah. the entire idea is just, yeah, make it, make it to where we're a big enough annoyance and nuisance to where it's easier to just do what we want. Than, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Than to yeah, keep yeah, on fighting which, those and, and I think that's like such a, an underappreciated like aspect of historical warfare. And it's not like something that, you know, cause there's so many, uh, Sort of historical figures who are kind of who have such lofty ideas about like glory and whatever that like yeah it's sort of it's almost kind of refreshing to come across somebody like Iberville who's just like thinking about it very coldly and very economically oh, again, very recently know. i watched your the checkmate lincolnites about the generals and the leadership and that was your entire point about the union is that they're yeah. willing to wage the war as it had to be waged instead of lee who's trying to be a little napoleon you know, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, over simplistically, probably, but I mean, yeah, it, it's. I, I love that kind of um, like warfare of attrition and just you know trying to take every little advantage through the, the logistical means and whatnot. Yeah, very interesting yeah. stuff. Uh, all right, let's do one more super chat before we go on to our questions here, uh, because because uh, uh, this I feel like is a cool thing we might. Uh, both of you have championed shared smaller yeah. slash growing channels, which Brandon did for me. Uh, do you have any you'd like to recommend at the moment? <laughs> Uh, how about yourself first? I have a few uh, so I, I recently uh, shared, this is the guy who I've been into uh, uh, recently, the hat historian. Uh, last I checked, he's got like 500 subscribers. Um, uh, and it's it's just a very, you'd like him, Brandon. He's a- Yeah, I, I saw that one. I saw that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a, uh, uh, I mean, you know, to be fair, just let me, like, I don't know anything about this guy. I've just seen his videos. I don't know if he's, you know- uh, he might be a terrible person. I don't know, but, uh, but I do, he does make really good uh, history videos and it's just history of various hats and it's delightful. And he's just mm -hmm. like a very like likable dorky guy who's just talking about hats and he's got costumes and he's just in his room and there's some good info. Mm -hmm. Like I learned a lot watching his videos and, um, yeah. uh, and yeah, like he should, he should absolutely have more viewers. Yeah, to be sure. Um, so I actually, I have a little running list on my YouTube, on my actual YouTube channel, where if you scroll down to the bottom, oh, it's fun. more history channels. Although full disclosure, um, yeah, pretty much all the guys there um, are people that I know personally and they're friends of mine. Um, but all the same, they're all, I always make sure like as soon as someone gets bigger than me, I take them off that list, Andy. Um, <laughs> but um, uh, my friend uh, Josh Adventures in History Land is his channel name. Uh, it's really good for like, if you enjoy really long form, like deep dives into uh, stuff with experts. He gets a lot of people that he interviews on his channel and he'll be like, Hey, we're going to talk about like the French revolutionary Navy in the early days of, you know, like this, like the, of the French revolution or whatnot. Um, like that's one of his most recent subjects is talking about that or, um, 
like uh, uh, his most recent video, I think, is like a deep dive into Native American history, you know, things like that. Um, he's really good for that. Um, my friend uh, uh, John from the Far Off Station does a lot of um, like British, like later, like more Victorian and early 20th century military history. Um, he has a lot of different, like different rifles and uniforms that he's able to pull out and talk about. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. We do a lot of fun stuff there. Um, FTG, the Ministry for History, my friend Lord Rivers, as we call him, is Daryl is his name, but he's, he is uh, his lordship, the Lord Rivers. Um, and he does a lot of really interesting stuff about, uh, again, mainly like Victorian, like memorials and monuments, uh, artillery is his like big passion, stuff like that. Um, and then of course, Chris the Redcoat is another friend of mine. Uh, I used to be in the same reenactment group as him. We, we both left that organization, but um, he's now part of the 40th Regiment of Foot, uh, British like light infantry, and, and he does videos about Again, basically, uh, very similar stuff to myself. He he talks about like misconceptions about the American War of Independence and stuff like that. Oh, and then one last, um, a guy that actually I very recently discovered, um, and I'm actually going to be doing a collaboration project with him and a few others, uh, is uh, Chest Gammon. It's a kind of a, a, a strange name. But, uh, C H E S S E D Gammon, G A M O N, uh, and he. Um, uh, he has like his shorter form content where it's like very pithy, very rapid talking, quick edits and flashes. It's just very like solid, um, like just uh, production values and whatnot oh, cool. and stuff that he does, which is fun. Um, so yeah, there, there's nice. there's just a few. For you. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, we can't, you know, I mean, Brandon did me uh, a huge service by, you know, uh, by filming with me Ooh. and and and, uh, and and helping me out when I was uh, when I was but uh, uh, as a little child uh, upon the mm. platform and yeah so it's definitely you know I mean um, yeah if people are like putting forward the effort and 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 have good history and good information I mean obviously yeah it's the least uh, that that I can do as well you know to uh, to, mm -hmm. to to give them shout outs um uh, but yeah yeah so uh, shall we move on here Brandon should we um, Yes, sir. I believe we're down to our last questions. Is that correct? Are we? Uh, I think I've got, uh, I have two more. Okay. Well, that's okay because I'm more. losing. So. Oh, okay. There we go. Uh, well, if you've only got one more, then, then I, then I don't have to, uh, then I can. No, no, them. I'll take both of them. Even if we don't count it for the score, I'd uh, just, just. Oh yeah. 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 Well, well it, that's content. right. It does help you, doesn't it? Uh, it does okay. Help me. So, uh, here's, so here's my question. This is uh, this is kind of a cute one because it's something we did together when we were hanging out. Oh, uh, the Powder House of Ma of Manchester by the Sea, in Massachusetts, yeah. was built in what year? I will also oh. accept for in anticipation of which war was it built? Okay, well, it was in anticipation of the War of eighteen twelve. Uh, I want to say it was built in eighteen ten or eleven. Is eighteen eleven? Ten. Oh, ten. Okay, all right. That's a point for Brandon, everybody. Yay. Yeah, that's the town I used to live in. And Andy came up to visit. He, I, I stuffed him in a, a, a coat and a hat and I forced him to make a <laughs> stupid parody video because I thought it was fun. Oh, no. And it was then awesome. we walked around. It was awesome. We had so much fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, and I, I, uh, I, uh, I mean, you know, stop me if you, if you, this isn't anything like personal or anything, but stop me if yeah, you, no, if I've, you mind I've moved. I've yeah, moved. you've moved. So, so it, it is kind of interesting because you, uh, um, back in Brandon's old place, you know, you kind of look at like how he shot his, uh, how he shot his videos and you sort of get the sense, oh, it's just kind of like a wall of his house, right? And it's like a certain area and, and well, he's it was got actually like, like his bookshelf. Half of the house at that point. Well, that's what I was going to say. It's like, it's just oh, kind of yeah. like, oh, it's a bookshelf and like a painting in the background and it's him sitting like at a desk and it's like, okay, you know, and like, you know, surely this is just like a room in his house. And uh, and then oh, like, it went and it was, and it's literally his house had two rooms. <laughs> it was just yeah. like a oh, tiny that's apartment. Being generous. It had a yeah, room yeah. and an alcove. It was just like the tiniest apartment I've ever seen in my life. I mean, it was cozy. Yep. It was nice, but like that was a thousand dollars a month I got to pay for that. Oh Welcome to God, New England. Dude. Yeah, well, yeah. New England, and not even like in Boston either. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, you no, know, it was like it's a nice town, but like, oh, it was a beautiful yeah, that, town. Oh, beautiful, it was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful town, beautiful but uh, not worth it. Like, yeah, the, my no. basically the office that I'm in now in my new apartment is the size of my entire yeah. flat back then, like kitchenette and everything included. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was always so embarrassed to bring people around for that reason. But um, yeah, no, I uh, no, I mean, it wasn't, you know, I mean, place, you know? hey, you know, I've like, I mean, especially for like somebody, I, I don't think it's like embarrassing considering that you are like the owner of a small business uh, that you are, you <laughs> well, know, 
in your you're you're in your mid twenties. You're the the owner of, of a successful small business. Like hey, uh, I, you know what is I, I was able to afford that place. Town, you know? Yeah, like on on my own, uh, working yeah, exactly. part time as a tour guide and doing YouTube as opposed to uh, 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 ten hours a day or I'm sorry nine hours a day as an insurance claim adjuster, which was yeah. miserable before that. Oh, God, so I can only imagine. It, so it worked out. Yeah, it all worked. Yeah, out. yeah, exactly. But but yeah, it was kind of funny. It's just sort of like it's literally like kind of what you see is what you get. Like in Brandon's yeah, old well, videos, you see because I remember, and, like, like, and that's like that's like most of the house is like yeah, it's just like so <laughs> tiny. It's like I remember <laughs> in your first video, like re the reply to me, you're like, yeah. oh yeah, but I have the bigger bookshelf, and it was an allegory yeah, for yeah, the penis yeah, and yeah, all yeah. that. Very very fair. But um, I remember thinking like. But I can't have a bigger yeah. bookshelf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, fuck I you. want to. I have yeah, yeah, yeah. like half, yeah, like exactly. in fact, no, like, like three quarters of all my books were stuffed under my bed because there was no other place to put them. <laughs> no I'm like, you don't yeah, understand. Yeah. Yeah, There's exactly. so much more. <laughs> uh, no, man, it was great. Uh, uh, but yeah, it was a great, it was a great time. Yeah, we had we had a, we had a great time uh, just kind of tromping around uh, in Manchester yeah. and stuff. Uh, all right, hit hit me, Brandon. What you got? Okay, so. Uh, this one I think is is the most esoteric of them all. If, okay. that's, if I'm okay. using that word correctly, I'm not sure. All right. The Ananerba, Himmler's pseudo scientific archaeological mm. think tank cult, launched mm. numerous expeditions in search of archaeological proof of Hitler's Aryan Übermensch. They would go to Warsaw and other occupied regions to trawl through museums for anything remotely Germanic or otherwise supporting the National Socialist ideology. Uh, for mm -hmm. example, they claimed that a series of bodies that were found in bogs, like in Northeastern Europe or whatever, um, were homosexuals whom early humans had abhorred and murdered in a clear attempt to cleanse their own societies of such oh wretched degeneracy. <laughs> uh, so it's, which is basically a less than discreet attempt to lay the groundwork and convince the German population uh, that such exterminations were like had historical justification. Like this is the sort of thing that happens and we're just carrying on those footsteps. Yeah, um, yeah. A lot of weird ideas about homosexuality among the Nazi regime, especially considering how many homosexuals were in the top brass. Um, yeah. yeah. My, my question, my last question to you, sir, is, can you name a few of the other planned expeditions of the Ananerba, um, whether they ended up happening or not? Um, where did Himmler's crackpots plan to find their national, soci uh, national socialist archaeological evidence? And there's a lot of different opportunities here, but um, it is impossible, I think, for me to win at this point. So I'll, just, I'll let you uh, list off as many as you can, and then I'll give you the uh, more complete list. And uh, Okay. So, I'll all right. So, so... I'm I've, I'm I'm not confident in these answers, but Iran, India, and Nepal. I don't know necessarily about India. I couldn't find anything about uh, India, but actually, I'm not seeing it. No, I, I didn't see Nepal either, but I did see Tibet. Okay, I, I think um, that I think that's Iran, a point. No, oh, yeah, to, to be sure. But, uh, <laughs> no, but Iran, Iran was proposed, but it had to be canceled because of the war. Um, but and, and uh, those ones are, I think, yeah, like the more obvious because of, like the whole Aryan, you know, thing. Uh, but yeah, there are yeah, a few yeah. in here that really, uh, really surprised me. Um, there was oh, a, yeah? there was one expedition to Karelia, in 1935, um, hmm. to Bohuslän, someplace in Sweden, in 1936, Italy, 37. Okay. There was one uh, apparently expedition to New Swabia, which is in Antarctica, in 1938, wow. 39. Yeah. Holy that's shit, like, that's a fucking like, movie. If you want, like, yeah, like, like a where new, is that like, movie? <laughs> the thing kind of movie. Like, yeah. There you go. Oh my. Oh um, my. Oh my. God. It writes at the very itself, end of the movie. It's, it's actually just like a rabbi under the ice. That's the that's the whole mystery. The oh time. my. Oh my god. That would be amazing. <laughs> that'd be amazing. Oh my. Ser no, seriously, that's <laughs> um, a movie. That is at least. Yeah, um, that's a, that's at least a mediocre miniseries. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Like that. Um, oh my God. Not. But like, yeah. Like, yeah. there's there's a video oh, idea for you is because I can see Hans, okay. you know, sitting there shivering in the ice Klaus. and talking. Klaus about is something. his name, Brandon. I'm Excuse sorry, me. Klaus. 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 Yes, Klaus. Thank Klaus. you. Um, again, send my most disparaging of regards. Please. I will. I will. Um, I will. Yes. But uh, <laughs> otherwise, there were some in Romania, Lebanon, Greece, uh, Turkey, which makes sense. Yeah. Then yeah, then yeah. there were canceled expeditions. The one in Iran was canceled. There was hmm. a canceled plan in Bolivia. I thought was interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. The Canary Islands, and even in Iceland, apparently. Oh, so they were wow. going like all over yeah. the place where anything yeah, yeah, yeah. significant happened, and they're like, "We're gonna find our Aryan." Uber. I don't know why they're going yeah. to Antarctica. They're doing like some weird, like, um, like uh, Iron yeah. Skies or whatever kind of thing. Yeah, there, yeah. 
find a Nazi yeah, spaceship. Honestly, under the I think maybe, it, was, but... it, it was probably some weird kind of tectonic sort of uh, mm. plate sort of ideas. You know what I mean? Like, and, and I think that's like a big pseudoscience thing is that like, uh, it's sort like of Germany is at the be, center of the world or something like that. Yeah, or, or just that like, you know, the continents were different. Uh, oh, uh, my dog just came in. Um, the continents were like different back in the day in ancient times. And like, so, you know, mm. and, and uh, um, yeah, so, so I, and that's a big pseudoscience sort of thing that sort of okay. comes up a lot in those circles. And I wouldn't be surprised hmm. if that was uh, also in the, uh, the honor and okay. But yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, hey, can we uh, just, you know, real quick talk about how, uh, how Himmler, I think, was uh, maybe kind of in the closet a little bit? I mean, you know, oh, just, uh, I think it's sort of the flamboyancy of the honor and and just the like, just the, the, the masculine, yeah. like, like oh, showmanship sorry. of, like just the fabulous masculinity oh, yeah. of the SS. If I There's another clip if, that I'm sure y'all could if use. If I may, oh, and, and also of course the idea that he was obsessed with the idea on. that close contact with other men could turn you homosexual, and he's trying to find ways to prevent that sort of thing. Like, okay, buddy, yeah. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I have yeah. a, I have a request, and uh, it's yes. very important request. Um, okay, but my, my girlfriend would like to see the dog. Okay, let me let me grab him. He left again, but yeah, I can I can oh, do it. I can him. do it. And okay. yes, she will. He's, he's going. I'm sure there are many people in the chat who would also be appreciative of this sort of thing. But yeah, Himmler is a very interesting figure. Um, the, and as well, like the whole, like he's adorning himself with so many medals because he's like, uh, no, I'm a soldier just like all the rest of you guys. <laughs> I mean, like, he's like the only guy. He's like, a little I, rascal. Sorry, he got away. <gasps> there um, he is. There you go, Sarah. Very cute. What's Al. the name? Al. Uh, here, I'm going to put you down for one quick, uh, quick second, lovey, so I can put my... Headphones on. Come on back, sweetie. Hey, hey, come on back. Come back. Let's say hi to Brandon. Let's say hi to Brandon. Here he is. So Sal's oh, a dachshund. We I love we that. just gave him a haircut, which was very hard and took hours, and he screamed like oh. he was getting murdered. Oh my! And he bit me very hard. Uh, on Do you want to on say the hello finger. to the pup, Sarah? What? So, just say hello to the pup. Hello, pup. This is Sal. Thank you. <laughs> It is much yeah, appreciated. Thank you. Of course, of course. Yeah, he's my he's my sweet little guy. I love him. Um, Very cute. My uh, my my uh, good friend Eduardo, who I make movies with, he always is freaked out when I let Sal kiss me because he's just like, oh, you know, you know that dog is like licks his butt, right? It's just like mm -hmm. I couldn't give less of a fucking shit. <laughs> I want <laughs> kisses from my dog. <laughs> fucking sue me, dude. Yeah, you know, some people they just they just don't get it. They just don't get what it's like to have a. Sweet animal companion. Mm -hmm. um, My video is lagging, right, so. Oh, yeah. All right, bud. Very cute. Thank you very much, sir. Of course. All right, but so how I, about. I believe. What was that? Say what? Carry on. I was going to say, uh, is there another question or. There is another question. So how about oh, since right. you are losing. Uh, I am losing. Since you are losing. I only and even losing after about... giving you a fake question that you had no way of actually knowing the answer to. So, uh, how about <laughs> this last question? Mm -hmm. We do double or nothing. Oh, okay. If you can, if you can win this, if you can get this question, Brandon, and we didn't end up doing the, the ask the audience. Uh, oh or, yeah, or no, we did. Thing. You're right. We that was an idea that. we had. But that's but that's fine. Uh, anyway, in this round, in this extra credit round, it is it is unavailable. Right. I just decided. So yes, Un understood. Uh, Fair. So uh, uh, so this is double or nothing. This is for the game. If Brandon do, gets do, do, this, do, do, do. he doubles his points. Those are the Double official points. rules that I just made up. <laughs> uh, are you ready, Brandon? I am ready. All right. Pierre Jacques Etienne Cabroni, major of the Imperial Guard at Waterloo. Oh, oh, okay, is, that guy. Is said to have spat this one word at the British. Uh -huh. Wow. Well, they so, urged him to surrender. Of course, you're going to give me the, the easiest one as the very last question. Uh, I was going to say, there, there are actually two stories. One story, which is longer than one word, he says, like, the guard does not surrender. So, like, the, like, the, like something, the god, that's da, 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 da. But the one word that everyone is, is much more fond of would be mad. Ding, 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 ding. ding, yeah, ding, ding. Oh, that Takes was so big. That was so shit. bad. Double or nothing. That means. Boo. Oh, come on. That, that wasn't means... earned. 
One, two, three, four. It was a double or nothing. That means, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that Brandon has won the competition. Uh, Brandon a, is a the winner. Host, so I have been, winner. I have been cucked. I have been humbled. Uh, I, I, ha I am, I today, I am the soy boy beta male. Uh, we, we behold before okay. us the alpha male, Brandon F. <laughs> Um, I, you has, know, I don't even. I, I skulk away from the pride, licking my. You know, I, I don't even spit out my gum because it just wastes so much time. I'm on the Sigma grind set. You just you have to just have dedicate every moment to the grind. So just swallow the gum. There's not enough time. <laughs> that yeah, may yeah, be a exactly. really obscure joke. I don't know if that's a popular meme or a pay money uh, <laughs> joke, but it's one of the. <laughs> uh, what a game! What a game! It was. Good I'm fun. sure everybody watching was on the edge of their seats. Uh, I'm sure it was. Utterly fascinating for everybody. We're coming up on three hours, so uh, I think we should probably call it a night. What do you think, Brandon? Yeah. Um, yeah, I suppose so. Um, any other like any last minute questions, uh, super chats that we missed? Do we want anything we're going to go through? Any other good interesting question? Uh, let me um, let me just review real quick. I mean, I'm sure there probably were a couple. Oh, somebody says great collab. Great collab. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, we love we Thank love you. collaborating. Brandon and I are you know we get along super well, yeah. and we are good friends. And uh, always love having Brandon and talking and catching up. Oh. And yeah, like like I said, I mean, it was you know we it's been a what we've been texting back and forth a lot recently, but we hadn't like had a chance to like catch yeah. up in a while. So it, this mm -hmm. was truly great. And uh, um, and uh, yeah, everybody. So thank you so much for tuning in to the battle of the century, Brandon versus Atun Shea. Uh, Brandon won this one. Uh, he may have won the battle. But the war will continue <laughs> somehow. <laughs> somehow. Somehow. Uh, all right, everybody. Good night. Every salute in the handbook. It's a, it, it, it's the worst thing because you have to like say goodbye and then also reach over and hit the and hit the button. It's kind of. It's, I know it's exactly. I can, no I can do it with my left hand. I can do it. Ready? Yeah. The, it, it, well. it, it, there's a period setting for it. <laughs>